The Protector Chapter 951 My son is as powerful as a god. The next day, all the shops that had chased Emma out received a stern warning. Some were even forced to shut down. The reason was simple not only did they disrespect the basic rights of consumers, rather. They had also gone as far as to insult and use physical force upon one of their customers. There was not a single person who was not shocked by this unexpected turn of events, the Black family was especially shocked. Upon receiving the news, Logan immediately contacted the relevant people in charge. He got a very simple answer the previous day, someone had filmed the store owners. Refusing to serve Emma and had used that to file a report against them. This caused not only Logan, but the whole Black family to become furious. Just when we were celebrating how well this plan had worked out for us, we've received news that it was reported. Of course, they would never have thought that Levi was the one behind all of this. All they could do was complain about what good luck Levi had, which was something that seemed to be happening rather often these days. In the morning, Levi told Emma that he was going to take her somewhere. While she was doubtful, she followed him anyway. It turned out to be the market that she had visited yesterday. Oh, you're here. I'll pick out the freshest vegetables for you. Please come here, I'll sell you the best meat and I'll even throw in some freebies. You're finally here. I've prepared these medicinal herbs for you. The stall owners who had turned her away yesterday seemed to have done a complete 180. Not only did they now want to sell their goods to her, but they also wanted to give her freebies as well. Levi brought Emma to many other places. The store owners were all overjoyed to see her and were willing to sell their goods to her. When they got to the pharmacy that Emma had visited the previous day, the owner bent his head deeply in apology. After all, it was a much bigger deal for a pharmacy to have refused service in the worst-case scenario, the customer may suffer a fatality from not being able to obtain the necessary medicine. Levi, this, Emma was shocked. Yesterday, I was met with disdain from everyone and was shut out by the entire city. And now, I feel like as though I am some kind of celebrity. See, Mom? I told you that you could trust me. All these are but trivial matters to me. Levi smiled. Emma spaced out. No, it's a good thing that my son is powerful. She sucked in a deep breath. Overwhelmed by her sudden realization, impulsive thoughts. Such as bringing him to the garrison family popped up in her consciousness. Just you wait I'll show you that my son isn't a worthless commoner his power is unequal. Terms with the garrison family. However, she knew that this was all just an overinflated desire of hers. No matter how strong Levi is, he will never be able to take down the garrison family. It's foolish to think that Levi's measly 20 years worth of training would be enough to rival the sheer power of the garrison family, which has countless generations of heritage under its belt. At this moment, to their disbelief, Zoe pulled up. Aunt Emma, let's go. I'll take you somewhere. Zoe smiled mysteriously. Levi felt rather suspicious. What does she have in mind? The Protector Chapter 952 Zoe got slapped. Very soon, they reached a top-tier neighborhood. By this time, Levi had already understood Zoe's intentions. She definitely bought a house for Mom. When they got off the car, as predicted, Zoe had brought them toward a neat row of manners. They were all elaborately renovated and were ready to be moved into immediately. Mom, I bought this house for you. You'll live here from now on. Zoe beamed. Also, I've hired a nanny to take care of you. As soon as Emma heard that, she burst into tears. I have such a good daughter-in-law. To think that she would buy me a house a manor, even. No, no. There's no need to worry about me. I'm all right with staying with Levi. This is way. Too expensive, Emma refused. How could I allow that when he can't take even take care of people? 
Besides, this house is close to my office, so it's convenient for us to visit you. Zoe smiled. She had spent 20 million on this manor. While her net worth was high, most of it was invested in her company. She only had a couple of millions in hand, and buying the manor had cost her half of that. Mom, Zoe means well, so just accept it. Levi smiled. And she's right the location is. Great. He had wanted to buy his mother a big house himself, but Zoe beat him to it. Levi, Mom shouldn't have to head back. You should go and bring her things here, Zoe. Instructed. Try as she might, Emma could not turn Zoe down, so she had no choice but to accept the manner. Very soon, the nanny had arrived. She was a gold standard nanny selected very carefully by Zoe. During her free time, she was even able to accompany Emma to go shopping. Zoe, we owe you too much. Levi will make it up to you, Emma admitted, touched. Zoe laughed, saying, I'm just asking for him to cause less trouble for me. Looking at the peaceful, harmonious scene before him, Levi felt extremely blessed. He decided to bring Morris' parents over in a couple of days. When they heard that his mother was back, they wanted to see her. When the old folks gathered together, they could keep each other company and keep each other from getting lonely. Besides, Levi's circumstances allowed for this luxury. At night, Zoe reached home and was about to enter the house when she was stopped by Meredith and the other members of the Black family. Grandpa, Grandma, what's going on? And Dad, Mom, what are you all doing? Looking at the group in front of her, Zoe was confused. Do you even know what you've done? Meredith asked coldly. What? Zoe asked. How could you say that? You'd bought a manor for Levi and his mother. How could you? And you'd even hired a nanny at such a high price. Do you want to go with Levi? Meredith. Shouted. It's not that big of a deal. She's Levi's mother, so she's my mother, too, Zoe replied. Stubbornly. Slap. All of a sudden, Zoe was slapped harshly across her face. The Protector Chapter 953 Get Stronger Caitlin was the one who hit Zoe. She stared at the latter and yelled furiously, Your mom? I'm your only mom. Zoe was flabbergasted to be slapped so suddenly and stared at her mother in disbelief. That was the first time someone had ever hit her since she was born. Zoe, you're such a disappointment. Her father, Aaron sighed. Why would you be so stupid as to buy a house for Levi's mom? What on earth was going through your head? Are you intending to leave the Lopez family and the Black family? You want to live with Levi and his family from now onward. Everyone was taking turns to reprimand the woman. Zoe covered her face with her hands, feeling extremely aggrieved. She did not think she had done anything wrong. Let me tell you this. If you are going to treat Levi's mother as your own mom, don't call me mom anymore. Go and be with them if you wish. We will sever all ties from today onward. My stance is very clear. After she finished speaking, Caitlin walked out and slammed the door, leaving Zoe standing there, looking absolutely stunned. The younger ones in the Black family were all trying to persuade Zoe to change her mind. Zoe, we can't be too easygoing when it comes to marriage matters. As a member of the Black family, we should marry someone of comparable status. Besides, it's you, the hope of both the Lopez and Black families. That was indeed the truth. The main reason for the family's wrath was that Zoe was their greatest hope. Naturally, her marriage would be a serious affair to them. Judging by the current situation, Zoe clearly knew that she had only two ways out. Her first option was to become so strong that she would no longer be subject to the control of both families she will be able to do whatever she wanted. The second was for Levi to come up with a big surprise during their wedding, something big. 
and grand enough to shut the mouths of the families up. Otherwise, both the Lopez and Black families would continue to object to her union with Levi. However, Zoe quickly dropped the second idea, she wasn't sure if she could count on Levi to deliver on his word. It was easier for her to become stronger than to depend on Levi to do anything to stop her. Family's Objections It was perfect that Morris Group had launched a major technology project recently, and Zoe decided to speak to Iris and request to be in charge of the project. As long as that particular project proceeded smoothly, Zoe's career would be elevated to the next level. Her net worth would surely skyrocket. By then, she would be free to do anything she wanted and not be trapped in the current situation where she had to be subject to her family's scrutinizes. Zoe was the type of person who acted on her words. She immediately contacted Iris and asked to be in charge of that project. To her surprise, her friend agreed to her request readily. Sure, it's yours then. You'll have free reign. Hey? Don't you need to consider anything? This is a project that is worth hundreds of billions. Iris. Zoe was bewildered by the other woman's carefree attitude towards the project. Indeed it is, and you're now in charge of the project, Iris replied. Well, your husband is the boss of Morris Group, so everything is already yours. Whatever request you have will certainly be granted. But this is such an important project. Shouldn't you have a discussion with the rest before coming to a decision instead of handing it to me straight away? Zoe asked in shock. Trust me, no one will object to this decision. If you don't believe me, I can call them right. Now to ask. Iris then personally rang each of the higher UPS and asked for their opinions on the project. Being handed over to Zoe. Ms. Lopez would like to handle that project? I'm totally for it. Oh, Ms. Lopez wishes to do so? I don't have any comments then. Iris carried on calling the board members, and each one of them agreed instantly when they heard that it was Zoe who wanted the project. The Protector Chapter 954 Wow! Zoe looked totally perplexed, the whole thing felt like a dream to her. Weren't the higher UPS of Morris Group supposed to be the creme de la creme? Is this how a project that's worth hundreds of billions supposed to be handled? Why did they agree to it once they heard my name? What's the meaning of such readiness? Ever since those people found out that Levi was the boss, Zoe had immediately risen to the top of their priority list. She was now their lady boss after all. Iris, I didn't expect your influence in the company to be so strong. They only agreed to it. Because of you, right? The only reason Zoe could think of for the higher UPS willingness was that she was Iris. Friend. She thought it was on that account that they trusted her with the project. Why would I have such influence? They only agreed because you're our lady boss. I'm merely your employee. Meanwhile, Emma was busy boiling chicken soup at their new house. She intended to deliver it to Levi and Zoe when lunchtime arrived. Just then, Someone rang the doorbell. The nanny opened the door and asked, Who are you looking for? Is Emma Jones in? Emma rushed out of the kitchen immediately. The people standing at the door were Zoe's. Parents, grandma, and a few of their other relatives. Oh, hello. It's so nice to see all of you. Come on in, the woman welcomed them all in a friendly manner. Ha! Huh. Seems like you are already seeing yourself as the owner of this place, aren't you? Caitlin yelled suddenly. Hey! Emma was shocked at that sudden outburst. The house was bought by my daughter. Who gave you the right to stay here? Zoe's. Mother glared at Emma. Zoe bought this place for, for me. The latter mumbled. Who do you think you are? Why would she buy it for you? I. Emma was stumped. It didn't seem right to say that Zoe was her daughter-in-law. After all, her son and Zoe were still officially divorced. 
no matter how she looked at the situation, it indeed seemed as if she and Zoe were completely unrelated. It did seem that Zoe had no reason to buy her a house. See. She can't even come up with a proper explanation. That's because Zoe is not related to her in any way. I suspect she cheated my daughter. Into buying her this house. Caitlin sneered. Meredith agreed with her right away, saying, Yup. Our Zoe is kind and innocent. She. Definitely fell into your trap. This house is worth tens of millions. Why would Zoe buy such an expensive house for a stranger? Anyone with just a bit of common sense would know what happened. Surely, Zoe was duped. There are too many wicked people around these days. After everyone shared their views on the matter, their accusatory gazes landing on Emma. Aaron then berated, Come clean this instance. How did you manage to swindle Zoe? If we find evidence of you doing so, we'll ensure that you serve jail time. Yup. If you don't tell us what happened, we'll get someone to investigate the matter and send you straight to jail. Everyone began hurling threats at poor Emma. The Protector Chapter 955 The woman tried to explain herself anxiously, I did not cheat her. I really didn't. You guys have misunderstood the entire situation. If you don't believe me, you can check with Zoe. Directly. Ha. Huh. You think it would be helpful to ask her since she has already fallen for your trick? I see that you're indeed a cunning woman. Meredith shot a look of contempt at Emma. Hey, excuse me? Who are you guys? You are causing a disturbance to us. Can you please? Leave. The nanny, Nancy, was unable to tolerate their behavior any longer. Who the hell are you? You have no right to speak. Meredith glared at Nancy and chided. Her. Besides, do you even know who bought this house? My daughter did. I'm her dad, and she. Is her mom. After Aaron stated his relationship to Zoe, Nancy did not dare speak her mind. Any further. Emma Jones, you have to give us an explanation today. How did you trick my daughter into buying this house for you? We are going to make your life really difficult if you refuse to say anything. Caitlin proclaimed coldly. The woman and her entourage had already set their minds on teaching Levi and his mother. A good lesson. I did no such thing. Zoe really bought it for me on her own accord. I didn't cheat her into doing anything. Please believe me. Emma was in such a deep state of panic that she almost burst into tears. I'm her biological mother, yet she did not even buy an ordinary house for me, not to mention a villa like this. You're just an outsider. Do you think it's normal for her to buy you such a nice villa to stay in? Emma was at a loss for words, she did not know how to reply to Caitlin's accusation. In fact, she herself was not able to explain why Zoe had done such a thing for her. Well, say something. Explain it to us. Caitlin and the rest glared at Emma, sizing her up. The latter could only purse her lips and say, There's nothing I can tell you. I can't think of a reason why Zoe would buy me this villa, but the truth is that I had never conned her into buying it. Ha <laughs> ha. So you do know that it's ridiculous for Zoe to buy a house for you? Then why are you so shamelessly staying here? Emma, don't you feel guilty staying here? Or are you enjoying it very much? I've never met someone as thick-skinned as you. Not only are you staying in someone else's house, but you're also even boiling chicken soup? Do you really think you're some rich madam? Members of the Black family started throwing all sorts of insults at Emma. Why? Why are you looking at me with such a murderous expression? Do you want to hit? Me? Since you're staying in my daughter's house, you should be bowing and thanking me. Instead. But here you are with the actual nerve to glare at me. Caitlin yelled. Emma Jones, do you really think you can continue staying here? 
It's my daughter's house. So we have every right to chase you out of here. Pack up all your rubbish and scram immediately. You're not welcomed here. It's our house. You have no right to stay here. Meredith and the rest chased Emma away. The nanny could no longer stand the way Emma was being treated and stepped forward to. Question, does Ms. Lopez know about this? We are her parents. Do we even need to inform her of such a trivial matter? Anyway, you. We'll have to leave together with this shameless B asterisk TCH as well. Caitlin roared, she could not. Wait to chase those two women away. The Protector Chapter 956 Emma smiled when she heard that. She knew that things were not as simple as they seemed. However, she did not expect trouble to start right from the first day they moved in. Zoe was a good woman, and her family was not at fault. Emma only blamed herself for being a burden to Levi. Her presence in his life did not benefit him at all it only brought him trouble and ridicule. Why are you still standing here like an idiot? You should be packing your things right now. Meredith was itching to throw Emma and Nancy out of the house that very instant. After a long moment, the two women began to pack their belongings. Scram immediately. In the midst of the yelling from the crowd, Emma headed to the kitchen and packed the chicken soup she had boiled into two separate containers. I've been boiling this chicken soup for a long time. I want to bring it to Zoe as a way of expressing my gratitude towards her, Emma said. However, Logan suddenly stepped forward and snatched the containers from her. Splash! The man then proceeded to pour the soup into the drain. You're still thinking of harassing Zoe? I bet your real intention is to plead with her. Let me tell you that that'll be impossible. Logan said harshly. Jenny concurred. He's right. Besides, do you think Zoe would actually drink the soup? That's been boiled by you? Anything made by you will surely be disgusting, seeing as to how. You're so dirty. I'm sure she'll spit it out after trying one scoop of it. Hurry up and leave. Zoe would not drink something so filthy. Caitlin gave Emma an angry stare. In the end, Emma and Nancy were tossed out of the house. Bang! Logan slammed the door shut once the both of them were outside. Ha! Huh. We've finally managed to chase that annoying woman away. It feels so good. Aaron! Laughed. Meredith frowned and replied unhappily, not entirely, her scent is still lingering in the house. Quickly, open the windows to allow the revolting smells to dissipate. I must say, Zoe sure has good tastes in houses. Both Logan and Jenny were very satisfied with Zoe's housing choice. How about this, Grandma shall make the decision to let the both of you have this villa. As for Aaron and Caitlin, you two would be able to stay anywhere you want to next time at the rate Zoe's net worth is soaring. Meredith gifted the villa to Logan and his wife right away. Sure, we don't mind that arrangement. As long as it's not Levi's mom staying here. Aaron and Caitlin's target was solely Emma. They did not actually care about owning the villa at all. Thank you, Grandpa, Grandma, Aunt Caitlin, and Uncle Aaron. Logan was delighted to receive such a luxurious villa as a gift out of the blue. Meanwhile, Emma and Nancy had already reached the entrance of the estate. They bumped into Levi there. Mom, Aunt Nancy, what's going on? Levi asked. Mr. Garrison, you probably aren't aware of this, but Zoe's parents have chased us out. Emma had not intended to tell her son about it, but Nancy had spilled the beans upon seeing the man. What? Come, let's head back together. This is outrageous. Levi dragged the two women back to the villa with him. The Protector Chapter 957 Even though Emma was extremely reluctant to return to the place, she could not win against Levi. Levi was, in fact, overwhelmed with guilt as it was already the second time his mom had to endure such suffering ever since she moved in with him. 
The man had planned to change the entire team of security guards to his subordinates so that no one would be able to get near his mother again, not to mention hurting her. Ding dong! Ding dong! Members of the Black family had puzzled expressions on their faces when they heard the doorbell ring. Logan, go open the gate and see who's outside. Once Logan opened the door, a furious bellow was heard. Who gave you all the audacity to chase my mom out? Most of the blacks jumped in shock when they heard that voice. It's Levi. The next moment, they saw Levi walking in with Emma. We chased your mom away. What's wrong with that? Logan replied haughtily. This is my mom's house. Who gave you the right to chase her out? Levi said coldly. This is your mother's house? My foot. This house was bought by Zoe. What has it got to do with your mom? Jenny shouted angrily. Logan smiled and added, Well, this villa belongs to me now. Grandpa and Grandma have already gifted it to me. Robert and Meredith nodded and said, Yup, this villa is now Logan's. Your mom has got nothing to do with it. Ha! Huh. And who do you think you are? Who gave you the right to give Zoe's house to someone else? Levi asked. Meredith let out a curt laugh and replied, Levi, do you hear how unreasonable you're being? Now? You and Zoe have already divorced. Her assets are not linked to you in any way. However, we are her family, and that gives us the right to handle her assets. If that's the case, I'll inform Zoe about it immediately. When Levi took out his phone to ring Zoe, Meredith, and the others' expressions changed. Instantly. It would complicate matters if Zoe knew about the situation. After Levi told the woman what had happened, Zoe arrived at the villa shortly after. Dad, Mom, what did you guys do? I bought this house for Aunt Emma. Why did you chase her away? Zoe was enraged. That won't do. Why would you buy a villa for her when you two are unrelated? You'll be the butt of the joke if word gets around. If that happens, you'll bring shame to the family. Her. Father's stance was firm. Zoe let out a helpless smile and replied, Fine then, what do you guys want in order for Aunt Emma to continue staying here? Meredith shot a glance at Levi before answering, Since you asked, I'll let you know what I think. That woman can stay in this villa only if Levi pays you back for the house. Grandma, aren't you intentionally making things difficult by saying that? Zoe grew anxious. The villa was priced at more than 20 million. Where was Levi going to find the money to pay her? If Levi can't afford that, his mom will not have the right to stay here. That's right, a pauper shouldn't be staying in a villa, everyone else agreed coldly. Sure, I'll pay. It's just a mere 20 million anyway. The Protector Chapter 958 Everyone was stunned when they heard that, they stared at Levi blankly. Did he just say that amount is a mere 20 million? Very well. It sounds like 20 million is peanuts to you. I want you to show us that money. Right now. Meredith was infuriated by Levi's attitude. No problem. I'll transfer the money to Zoe right away. Levi then transferred 20 million to Zoe under the watchful gazes of the people present. What? He really just did that? How does he have so much money? Once the transfer was completed successfully, everyone looked at Levi in disbelief. It seemed entirely unreal to them for a ruffian like Levi to have so much money. If he could easily pay 20 million, it meant that what he had was way more than that amount. However, Zoe did not find it surprising. After all, Levi was one of the Joneses, and it was not entirely impossible that he had such large amounts of money. Even though the man had not earned the money himself, it had helped them solve the problem at hand. Fine, Levi Garrison. You're really something. But Zoe, you are not allowed to transfer the 
money back to him. In the end, Meredith and the rest had no choice but to leave the villa, feeling totally defeated. Logan and Jenny were the most upset among the group as they had lost the villa they had deemed as theirs. After the whole ordeal, Emma could continue staying there without any worry. Besides, the entire security team had already been changed to Levi's men. As such, his family would be safe from then onward. No one would be able to get near Emma, not to mention bully her in any way. Levi's mother unpacked her belongings and placed them back into her room again. She specially positioned her family photo beside her bed. Levi picked up the photo frame and said, Mom, just throw this away. No. She snatched it back immediately and hugged it close to her. This is my only memento. I have to keep it. The man pursed his lips and replied, Mom, do you still miss that man? Emma did not answer her son's question directly, but the answer was clear from the look in her eyes. His dad was definitely still in her heart, she did not regret any of her past choices. You miss him so much, but he does not think about you at all. After her settling matters with you, he went back to Oakland City and married another woman immediately. They even have a child who's only two years younger than me. Levi finally told his mom the truth. When his mother heard that, she was shocked to her core. Emma's eyes were filled with disbelief as she said, What? He married someone else? And they even have a child together. She was absolutely astounded. She retreated a few steps subconsciously and almost staggered to the floor. He told me that I'll be the only woman he loves in his entire life. It was his family who insisted on locking me up. He was not powerful enough to go against them. He vowed that he would not marry anyone else, he had vowed and that his bride would only be me. Because of that vow, I have been waiting for him all these years. I have always dreamed that he would come for me one day and marry me officially. Emma was sobbed uncontrollably as she spoke. Turns out that it was just my wishful thinking. He's been lying to me all this while. How could he marry someone else right after I left? She was crying hysterically and was feeling utterly miserable. When Levi heard what his mom said, he clenched his fists tightly, rage pulsing through his veins. He couldn't believe that it was how a man from Arudaya's number one ancient family behaved. That sort of conduct felt more like it was from a hooligan who was full of lies. Noble blood? What a joke. It's the greatest joke of the century. Because of his selfish promise, Levi's mom had waited for him in vain for more than twenty years. And that man? He got married to someone else long ago. The man should not have made a promise if he did not intend to keep it. This bastard deserves to die a thousand times. A murderous glint shone in Levi's eyes. Don't worry, your good days are coming to an end soon. After Zoe and I get married, it will. Be doomsday for the Garrison family. The Protector Chapter 959 Zoe pursed her lips as she listened to Levi rant. Her blood was boiling as well, and she wished she could punch that bastard right at that instant. She wanted to interrogate that heartless man and ask him why he had done such a cruel thing to Emma. But who was he? He was the heir of the most powerful family in Arudaya and his presence was akin to a mythical dragon roaming in the sky. Not to mention interrogating him, it wouldn't even be possible to meet him face to face. So what if Levi was the most prominent character locally? He was still no match for Arudaya's first ancient family. Besides, Levi was a nobody. Being a member of the Jones family was his most prestigious identity, but even a servant of the Garrison family could easily crush the Joneses. It was just not possible for him to challenge the Garrison family and seek justice for his mother. Revenge did not seem to be within their reach in this lifetime. They should simply strive to have a peaceful life and be contented with venting to each other whenever they needed to. Mom, what's his name? Levi asked. Tyrone Garrison. 
Emma recited that man's name through gritted teeth. All right. I'll remember it. That name shall be disgraced very soon. Levi said coldly. Meanwhile, early in the morning in Haven, the body of Caleb, a servant of the garrisons, was laid at the entrance of the imperial garrison family. It turned out that Osborne had brought him there. Osborne met Jonah, the head of the imperial garrison family from Haven, and told him what happened. Mr. Garrison, I don't have any connections to the garrison family in Oakland City, so I could only send him here, Osborne explained. Jonah was in deep thought for a while before saying, that bastard has grown to be so formidable that he was even able to kill Caleb. Caleb was an elite who was sent by Oakland City's garrison family to guard the South. The fact that he was the only person who was sent there is telling of his abilities. Exactly. Who would have imagined a bastard to be so powerful? Osborne was unable to wrap his head around the whole situation as well. After all, the reputation of Peace Hotel was now ruined. For the honor of the garrison family, that mother and son pair must die. If word gets out that they are still alive, it will only bring shame to our family. Oakland City's garrison family does not need to know about this matter. A bastard like him is not worthy of their attention. Leave it to me to settle it. Jonah spun his two legendary pearls in his palms and shouted towards the gate, Gather. Our men immediately. We're setting off to South City to kill Emma Jones and her bastard son. What? Sir, you're heading there personally. Osborne was surprised. He had initially thought Jonah would send an expert assassin to get rid of Levi and Emma. He had not expected the head of the Imperial family to attend to the matter personally. Mr. Garrison, is Levi Garrison that big of a threat to you? He asked, unable to contain his shock. Jonah chuckled and replied, of course not, he's just a small fry. Why would I feel threatened by him? He is definitely not important enough for me to deal with him personally. Osborne was a smart man, he immediately understood what Jonah meant. Could it be that Mr. Garrison has other matters to attend to at South City? Yes, that's right. I've heard a while back that the God of War has returned to South City with the Five Great Wars Regiment. I had planned to go there earlier on and was already making preparations. This is the perfect opportunity for me to make the trip, Jonah shared. Does Mr. Garrison have a history with the God of War? Osborne asked. Yes, indeed. Kieran, the King of War, is under the God of War. He is the benefactor of our Garrison family in Haven. Three years ago, if it weren't for him, our entire family would have perished overseas, Jonah sighed as he recalled what had previously happened. That year, Jonah had led several other key members of Haven's garrison family to take part in an overseas collaboration. However, they were ambushed there and were almost wiped out. Kieran was the one who had saved them. As such, the garrison family from Haven began treating Kieran as the family's benefactor. From then on, the Protector Chapter 960. Osborne smiled in realization. Oh, I see. You can also take this chance to meet the god of war. Other people might not be granted an audience with the general, but he will definitely want to meet you. Yes, that's what I intend to do. I have always wanted to meet the god of war in person. I've heard that he's also a garrison. Do you think he could be one of the garrisons from Oakland City? Jonah had that suspicion when he heard Garrison was the god of war's last name. The man had even tried to search the files for more information. However, the god of war's files were classified SSSSSS a confidentiality level even higher than that of Oakland City's Garrison family. Hence, Jonah was not able to find out anything. Osborne immediately replied, Yup, I think that's highly likely. A god of war who is a garrison, other than the garrison family, 
the number one ancient family, no other family would be able to have such a formidable descendant. Yeah, it can't be wrong. The Garrison family has produced countless talents. For a twenty-something-year-old man to be a five-star god of war, he must be from the Garrison family. Jonah was very confident in his guess. Oh yeah, it seems like that bastard is quite powerful now. Bring more men along. Get some. Fighters from the Tang sect as well, Jonah ordered. The corners of Osborne's lips curled up when he heard that the martial arts experts from the Tang sect would also be going. Tang sect was a legend. It was also one of the ancient families and was known for its usage of secret weapons and other martial arts techniques. Tang sect was still in existence during modern times, though they lived in seclusion, away from the crowd. As such, ordinary people wouldn't have heard of their existence. There were many other martial arts experts in the sect who were employed by the powerful families in Haven. Out of all the numerous families, the Garrison family was served by the most number of experts from Tang sect. Word was that those experts from Tang sect were all highly skilled and ruthless assassins. As such, Osborne was relieved, knowing that no matter how formidable Levi was, he wouldn't stand a chance against those fighters from Tang sect. The Garrison family was ready to leave by the next day and soon set off for South City. Knowing that the Garrison family from Haven had arrived at South City, all of the city's powerful and noble families got ready to welcome them. Even the upper echelons from neighboring cities had also joined in, including the royal families from Southampton, which were under the leadership of the Goel family. Each family had sent out a welcome party to receive the garrisons, and the streets were lined with colorful welcome banners. That was the kind of reception that only an imperial family would get to enjoy. Once news got out that the garrison family was visiting, hundreds of powerful families gathered to welcome them. Even though the garrison family from Haven was an imperial family, it was merely a division of the garrison clan in Oakland City. If Oakland City's garrison family arrived at South City, the welcome party would definitely consist of tens of thousands of other clans. Such a welcome ceremony would only be fit for the head of all the powerful and noble. Families Arudaya's number one ancient family, the garrison family. Right then, the aisles of the street were already crowded with people who were kneeling on the ground, worshipping the garrisons. It was their way of welcoming them in order to show respect for the imperial family. Jonah sat in his car, very satisfied with what he saw outside the window. Hmm, this is quite a ceremony. Look, the garrison family is godlike to the people. Whenever anyone hears our family name, they drop to their knees and worship us. The next moment, he changed the topic and said, the prestigious name of the garrison. Family holds weight globally. If the public finds out that the heir of the garrison clan from Oakland City has a bastard child and an ex-lover here, our reputation would be ruined. It would be so shameful for us. Therefore, it is of utmost importance that these two people disappear from the face of the earth. They remain a threat to the garrisons as long as they are alive. His eyes shone with killing intent as he spoke. Dad, where should we go now? Should we kill Levi and his mom first? Or should we head off to look for the king of war, Kieran, first? Jonah's eldest son, Seamus, asked. Of course we'll pay a visit to Kieran first. How can that bastard be compared to the king of War. Jonas snorted. The Protector Chapter 961. Trembling in fear, Seamus said, Dad, you're right. My priorities are all messed up. We can. Always finish off Levi any time we like. His father replied agitatedly, I'm glad you finally realize your mistake, boy. Don't be. Intimidated by Levi just because he killed Caleb. Caleb was at most just a servant of our family. You guys are really a disgrace to the Garrison family to be scared of Levi. 
the youngsters of the garrison family from Haven all kept their eyes downcast guiltily like a bunch of kids who had just broken something valuable in the house. They felt embarrassed to be intimidated by Levi, who was just an illegitimate child of their family. Levi doesn't deserve to be treated so seriously by us. He's clearly not that important. Fenton, Jonah's favorite grandson, emphasized in a cold voice. Jonah was pleased to hear those words. You guys should learn from Fenton. That's how a man from our family is supposed to behave. If the garrison clan from Oakland City know how intimidated you lot are by Levi, I don't think. I will be able to put up with the embarrassment. Master, we've found out where Kieran resides in. We can visit him right away, the butler. Informed Jonah. Great. I can't wait to meet him. Jonah guffawed. Soon, Jonah and his family arrived at the war zone compound. Azure Dragon and the rest were still staying there, although Levi had moved out. The commotion of the garrison's arrival soon caught their attention. Assuming that the garrisons were there to look for their trouble, Azure Dragon and the others strutted out of the building, all the while exuding a murderous aura. What are you lot doing here? Are you here to pick up a fight with us? White Tiger, who looked ready for a combat, confronted them. White Tiger was excited to find quite a number of skilled fighters in the middle of Jonah's entourage. All the fighters were experts in their fields who were evidently stronger than Caleb. The man had visited the compound last time and was easily killed by White Tiger and his entourage. It's been such a long time since I come across so many admirable skilled fighters. White. Tiger remarked with a chuckle. Kieran, you're the benefactor of our family. It's an honor to finally meet you, Jonah boomed. With the help of his sons and grandsons, Jonah walked up to Kieran and got down on his knees. Meanwhile, the rest of his family knelt on the ground around him in front of Kieran. We the garrison family from Haven, are here to pay respect to our benefactor Kieran. The garrison family from Haven's eyes were brimming with gratitude as they spoke. Without Kieran's help back then, the entire garrison family in Haven would not have existed. In the meantime, Osborne was flabbergasted by such a sight. He was shocked to see a family as powerful as the garrison family kneeling down humbly in front of the Five Great Wars Regiment. If the garrisons were acting that way in front of the Five Great Wars Regiment, Osborne dreaded to imagine how much more powerful and authoritative the God of War must be. Mr. Jonah Garrison. It's been three years since we last met each other. Kieran immediately approached the man and helped him to his feet. All the garrisons were elated to see that Kieran still remembered them. Kieran. I rushed here as soon as I heard you gracing the South City with your presence. I wonder who these gentlemen are. Jonah glanced at the other members of the Five Great Wars Regiment, curious. Let me introduce them to you. This is Azure Dragon, White Tiger, and Phoenix. Kieran introduced his peers to the garrison family. With his back hunched, Jonah shook hands with the rest of the Five Great Wars Regiment in an ingratiating manner. Men from the Five Great Wars Regiment who've been the right-hand men of the God of War. For ages. They are famous for being ruthless and merciless on the battlefield. I can't believe I'm meeting them all in one go now. This is huge. Although Jonah was the head of an imperial family, he still needed help from groups like the Five Great Wars Regiment to bolster his force. Not only Jonah needed their aid even the garrison clan based in Oakland City would have to take the Five Great Wars Regiment seriously too. If the group decided to pay the garrison clan a surprise visit, the family would have no choice but to invite them in cordially. Would I have the honor to meet the God of War too? Jonah asked, anticipation written all over his face. Everyone in the garrison family was desperate for a chance to meet the God of War. The Protector Chapter 962 Kieran answered his question with a pleasant smile, of course you can meet the God of War. In fact, he's a pretty friendly and approachable guy. 
Is that so? Jonah, as well as his family members, looked thrilled upon hearing what the man said. Meeting the god of war in person was probably the greatest wish of everyone from the prominent families. An idea struck Kieran, prompting him to ask Jonah, Mr. Garrison, I bet there's something else. That inspired you to come all the way here. Care to enlighten me? The latter replied with a breezy smile, meeting you is, of course, my top priority. However, you're right I'm here to run some unimportant errands. Unimportant errands? What sort of errands would that be? Kieran asked curiously. Sounding somewhat stiff, Jonah answered, I'm going to deal with a traitor of our family. In fact, it's too trivial a matter to be worth discussing with all of you here. Oh, it's a domestic affair. In that case, we'll leave you to it then. Kieran and the rest of the Five Great Wars Regiment couldn't be bothered with the garrison. Family's troubles. Then, Kieran invited Jonah and his family inside the war zone compound. His friendly gesture took them all by surprise. After all, few people in the world had the honor to be welcomed into the war zone compound. By the Five Great Wars Regiment themselves. In the meantime, Levi moved to stay with his mother's place for the time being. Emma had been enjoying quite a peaceful stay in South City so far. However, something had been nagging at the back of her mind she had a feeling someone would come after them. Soon after Caleb had failed to kill Levi and her. That was a danger they could avoid only via death. Ms. Jones, I was told that the Garrison family from Haven have come to this city. They. Streets outside are crowded with businessmen and tycoons who are eager to welcome their arrival. Is Mr. Garrison related to them? He does share their surname. Nancy, who had just come back from the market, prattled on. Say what? The Garrison family is here. Emma's heart gave a lurch after listening to what the nanny said. At last, the situation she had worried about the most had come. Although Levi had fought his way to become the most powerful and influential figure in South City, he was still a nobody in the presence of the Garrison family from Haven, not to mention the Garrison clan based in Oakland City, which was the most powerful of all imperial families. Yet, the woman's face still shone with determination. No matter what happened, she would do all she could to protect Levi and keep him out of harm's way. Jonah and his family left the war zone compound later that night. Mr. Garrison, I'm sure you will get to meet the god of war tomorrow, Kieran promised. That's great. I've prepared some gifts for him and his mother. I hope they will like them. As soon as Jonah learned that the god of war's mother was here too, he had immediately dispatched some of his men to make a trip back to Haven to pick a gift for her. The gifts would reach them by the end of that day. Mr. Garrison, that's very kind of you, Kieran commented with a smile. Soon, the Garrison family headed back to the villa they were going to stay in during their time in South City. Has anyone found out where Levi and his mother live? Jonah asked the rest of his family. Yes, we have. They're staying somewhere not too far away from here, and everything is under our control at the moment, answered Seamus. Well, there's no rush to deal with them now. After we meet the god of war tomorrow, we can finish them off the night before we return to Haven. Putting on a stern expression, Jonah glared at his sons and growled, What's wrong? Are you guys still scared of Levi, the useless bastard? It was obvious that Jonah did not take Levi seriously. In his opinion, the man was just like one of the ants crawling on the ground that he could kill. Easily by stepping on it. Why are all my sons and grandsons so scared of the bastard? Why do they all see him as a threat? Levi is clearly a nobody. What makes him so special? As my sons and grandsons, how can all of you be so timid and useless? I've told you guys this over and over again we can finish Levi and his mother off very easily. Haven't I made myself clear? 
Jonah seated. Dad, you're right. Levi Garrison is a nobody in the presence of our family. Seamus shouted. Vehemently. That's more like it. Now, we should focus our attention on preparing the meeting with the God of War tomorrow. Jonah instructed. The Protector Chapter 963 Emma woke up early the next morning to prepare breakfast for Levi and Zoe. As she had no idea how long such peaceful and happy days would last, she decided to enjoy every day like it was the last. While they were having their breakfast, Zoe asked Levi, Are you heading out later? Yes. Kieran told me someone wants to see me, so I have to head out. He had no idea who Kieran wanted him to meet. Despite that, he still decided to be there for his subordinate's sake. Okay. Let's talk tonight after you're back then, Zoe proposed, her face flushing with embarrassment. Sure, that shouldn't be a problem. Meanwhile, the gifts prepared for the god of war and his mother had arrived from Haven. All the gifts were nicely kept in three exquisite wooden boxes. After making sure that the gifts were to his satisfaction, Jonah broke into a contented smile. Every member of the garrison family from Haven dressed up to the nines before they set off to the war zone compound. To show their utmost respect to the god of war, they made their way to the destination on foot. All the tycoons of the city couldn't help but be astonished when they saw the garrisons walking along the streets. Jonah, as well as his family, arrived at the war zone compound in the morning. Mr. Garrison, boss will be late. Please do wait for him patiently, Kieran informed. Sure. It's our honor to wait for the god of war. Jonah laughed heartily. Seamus chimed in, exactly. Few people in the world have such an honor to wait for him. At least I've never heard of anyone having the honor before. For Jonah and his entire family, it was an esteemed honor to be awaiting Levi's arrival. They were more than willing to wait for days or even months to meet him. Will we become the talk of the town after word spreads around about our meeting with the God of War? About an hour later, Levi finally arrived. Jonah and his entourage were stunned to see him. Firstly, they thought Levi looked too young to be the God of War. Secondly, the man looked too much like a commoner for him to be someone as prominent as the God of War. Levi was dressed casually, so he looked no different from a commoner when he was not in action. Could he possibly be the god of war? Boss. It was only when the five great wars regimen greeted Levi did Jonah and the rest of his family believe him to be the god of war. Are they all here to meet me? Levi asked. It's our utmost honor to meet you, god of war. Jonah as well as his sons and grandsons, knelt down in front of Levi in unison. Boss, please allow me to introduce to you the head of the Garrison family from Haven. Jonah Garrison. He and I go way back, Kieran shared. The Garrison family from Haven. Levi scoffed. I'm almost sure that they're related to the Garrison clan from Oakland City. Yes. Esteemed God of War. I'm Jonah Garrison of the Garrison family from Haven. With his head pressed firmly against the ground, Jonah couldn't resist but ask, God of War. Is it true that you share our surname? Levi nodded his head. You're right. I am indeed a Garrison. All at once, Jonah and his family members heaved out a sigh of relief. All of them felt euphoric to have their speculation verified by the man himself. In their opinions, the god of war must be one from the garrison clan in Oakland City or other major branches of the family, considering that he was talented enough to become such a prominent figure. Jonah and his family were pleased with the prospect of being considered as the god of war's relatives. How could they not be elated upon hearing that piece of news? Jonah swallowed hard before looking up at Levi with anticipation in his eyes. God of war. Would you be kind enough to answer one more question from me? Go ahead, Levi answered. If I'm not mistaken, 
I suppose you are one of the greatest talents produced by the garrison. Clan in Oakland City. It's because they're the only ones who have enough resources to train. You into becoming such a skillful fighter. Although Jonah emphasized that it was nothing but his presumption, the man sounded very sure about what he said. The Protector Chapter 964 Everyone from Jonah's family couldn't wait to hear Levi's confirmation. If Levi were indeed someone from the garrison clan in Oakland City, the situation would be very beneficial to them all. They had to rely on the garrison clan in Oakland City for support as they were just a small branch of the garrison family. Now that they were lucky enough to have a chance to establish a connection with the god of war, their future seemed bright in their eyes. The garrison clan from Oakland City? Haha. <laughs> They aren't worthy to have a descendant as great as me. Levi's answer drove Jonah and his family to despair. The god of war isn't related to the garrison clan from Oakland City? What? How's that possible? Other than the garrison clan in Oakland City, which branch could possibly have the resources to train him? Jonah could not think of any other garrison branch who could be capable of nurturing a descendant like Levi. Just like them, the branches in Northeast City, Northwest City, and Chilshire could never have had the resources to train their descendants into someone like Levi despite them being an imperial family. Hey? You aren't from the garrison clan in Oakland City? How can that be? I can hardly believe. Other branches of our family have the resources to train you. The eyes of Jonah and his family went wide in shock all filled with utter disbelief. They did not think other branches of their family had what it took to train someone like the God of War. You guys are wrong to think that Boss ever relied on anyone to achieve his success. Just like everyone else, Boss started out at the bottom and slowly worked his way up to become the God of War through sheer hard work, Kieran quickly explained. Levi glanced at Jonah and the rest of his family before announcing, Listen to me very. Carefully I'm not related to any branch of the Garrison family, especially the Garrison clan. In Oakland City. Jonah and the others gasped in shock at his bold statement. How could someone from an ordinary background be the god of war of Arudaya? Those who were born into rich and powerful families did not think those who came from. Poor families stood a chance at achieving success. In their opinion. Someone from a poor background could never be a match for those from rich and powerful families, it was because they could never have the same education, resources, and connections the latter could have. Those from poor families, who managed to achieve something, would be quickly eliminated by those who come from rich and powerful families. Therefore, Jonah and his family found it hard to believe that the god of war actually came from a poor family. Well, please get up. We'll talk then, Levi urged. Thank you for gracing us, God of War. Jonah and the rest of his family rose to their feet and followed Levi to his room. Are you guys a branch of the garrison clan in Oakland City? The latter asked. Yes, that's correct. Levi flashed him a meaningful smile as he asked, I suppose you guys are here to carry out another mission then. The air in the room froze as soon as he posed that question. Everyone, including Kieran, gaped at Levi in utter astonishment. How does he know we have a mission? With that doubt in mind, Jonah experienced a mixture of feelings, his eyes brimming with disbelief. The rest of the garrison family were left stupefied, they knew the god of war was referring to their plan to kill Emma Jones and her son. Jonah took a deep breath to calm his nerves. I'm surprised at how fast words travels. How is even the god of war aware of our intention? To kill that B-TCH and her son? Bad news spreads like wildfire indeed. Now that even the god of war is aware of our plan, I bet the news will become widespread. In a jiffy. By the time that happens, those in Oakland City will become the laughing stock of the entire country. As a branch of their family, sure enough, our family will be implicated too. 
it will be hard to live with that kind of embarrassment. In order to prevent the disastrous situation, Jonah made up his mind to kill Emma and his son as soon as he could and tie up any loose ends. Jonah had actually planned to execute the plan the night before they returned to Haven. However, he changed his mind, deciding to play safe and not delay things any further. Jonah looked up at Levi and replied somewhat reluctantly, Yes, we're here to get rid of a traitor of our family. The Protector Chapter 965 Levi broke into a smile which grew wider and slowly turned into a sneer in response to Jonah's answer. They're really here to kill me. I knew they weren't only here to visit the god of war. A traitor? I heard from the grapevine that he is quite a prominent skilled fighter. You guys. Better summon more help to handle him. Levi chuckled. Levi's answer only cemented Jonah's opinion that the god of war had already discovered. Everything there is to know about Emma and her son. Even the god of war knows that Levi is a tough nut to crack. I bet our family has become. The laughing stock of the town right now because of that bastard and his mother. God of War, thanks for your concern. However, please don't worry about us. I'm sure we will. Be able to finish them both off. A dangerous glint flickered in Jonah's eyes when he said that. Well, I'll wait for your good news then. Levi nodded. Hey. Jonah's eyes gleamed with hope at once. Does the God of War also want to get rid of Emma and her son? Wait, of course he does. After all, he is one of the garrisons too. I bet he couldn't tolerate the scandal Emma and her son have brought upon the garrison. Family. No matter what, there is no reason to keep the both of them alive. I'll be there myself later tonight to make sure the two of them are killed. By the way, we've prepared some gifts for you, your mother, and your wife. We really hope. You like them. Jonah beckoned his sons to bring the gift boxes over. What does this mean? Levi questioned with a sharp edge in his tone. Kieran came to Jonah's rescue by saying, Boss, please accept their gifts. I'm sure Mr. Garrison means nothing but goodwill. Levi smiled in amusement. He had never received gifts offered to him by any other people. Yet, he couldn't see the reason why he should not accept the gifts from Jonah and his family, considering that they were there to kill him. Why shouldn't I take their gifts? Sure. Levi agreed to accept the gifts readily. Jonah delightedly presented the gifts to him one by one. The first box contained shiny armor made of a special metal. God of War, this armor was made according to a combination of traditional and modern techniques. What makes it stand out is its sturdiness. It can protect its wearer from knives, swords, and even bullets. It's much better than an ordinary bulletproof vest because it can withstand high temperatures. This armor is perfect for you. You can wear it on the battlefields, Jonah. Elaborated. Levi picked the armor up and examined it. Indeed, the craftsmanship was fabulous. I like this, he commented. Feeling thrilled, Jonah moved on to the second box to reveal red, wild ginseng. God of War, here's some red ginseng for your mother. It's a herb famous for its immense benefits for her health. This is great. I'll keep it too, Levi responded. Jonah, who tried hard to subdue the excitement coursing in his blood, continued to open the third box. This is a topaz pendant for your wife. Please send my greetings to your mother. And your wife on my behalf. Levi accepted all the gifts happily. You're really great at choosing gifts. I love them all, he commented with a friendly smile. If there's nothing else, I've got to go now. I hope your mission of eliminating the traitor goes. Well later, Levi said with a barely noticeable smirk on his face. Jonah and his family were ecstatic as the god of war had not only accepted their gifts but he also even showed care and interest in their mission. It seemed to them that they had successfully built a strong bond with the god of war. 
Through this trip, it was not hard to imagine what a promising and prosperous future they could have. With the bond with the god of war, they might get to act with more backbone the next time. They interacted with those in Oakland City next time. Kieran, we shall not disturb you guys any further then. In a buoyant mood, Jonah brought the rest of the family back to the villa. Immediately, the man started preparing for the mission to finish off Emma and her son later. That night, he was determined to make sure that their plan allowed no loopholes. Emma and her son will soon be unable to see the rising sun of the next morning. Jonah sneered. The Protector Chapter 966 Jonah had a clear idea of who he needed to implement his plan. He recruited six skilled fighters from Tang Sect, all of them masters in wielding concealed weapons. In addition to that, he dispatched 18 top skilled fighters trained by the Garrison family to guard all exits of the neighborhood, giving Levi no chance to escape. Last but not least, he and the rest of the family would be supervising everything from outside the neighborhood to deal with emergencies. Levi Garrison, I can't believe even the god of war sees you as a skilled fighter too. Tonight, I'm going to witness you in action with my own eyes. Jonah looked forward to the violence that would be unleashed. Meanwhile, Levi brought the gifts he had received from Jonah back home. He was overjoyed to receive the red ginseng, as that was what his mother needed the most. At the moment, in order to cure Emma's illness, he had sent some of his men on a search for rare and precious medicinal herbs over the past two days. Much to his pleasant surprise, he received red ginseng from the garrisons right at his doorstep. The red ginseng, if used properly, could cure his mother of her chronic illness, boost her health, and even help her achieve longevity. To be more precise, the red ginseng could help with his mother's skin condition too. In short, the red ginseng was a very timely gift. After consulting Frederick, Levi prepared a soup with red ginseng for Emma. When Zoe got back home, Levi casually passed her the topaz pendant. Someone sent us a gift each. This is yours, he said. Thanks. Zoe, who did not know much about jade, kept the topaz pendant away like it was just an ordinary jade pendant. It was unbeknownst to her that that topaz pendant was actually a priceless item the rarest of its kind. After all, the garrison family would never give out anything shabby as gifts. Anyone who knew something about Jade would have to pick their jaws up from the ground. When they saw the topaz pendant Zoe had received from the garrison family, Zoe would only realize the real value of the topaz pendant sometime later. Hey, didn't you say you had something to discuss with me? Levi remembered the woman telling him that that morning. Yes. Let's talk in the bedroom. The man couldn't help but be curious when she dragged him into their bedroom. Surreptitiously. I suppose you know that I'm handling a project worth a hundred billion right now, Zoe. Began. Yes, I know about it. It went without saying that Levi knew about the project. Zoe was working at the company. Owned by him, after all. Of course you are free to grab any project you like. You're the wife of the boss. When the project is officially launched, my net worth will soar, and I'll be free from the control of both the Lopez family as well as the Black family. By then, I'll have the freedom to make decisions in my life, like getting married to you, Zoe said. Only then did Levi understand why she was so eager to be in charge of the project. Solemnly, the woman stared at him. Just to be safe, I need to do something extra to make. Sure my parents and grandma have no chance to stop us from marrying each other. I actually don't think that's necessary because I will be able to settle all the problems. Levi had intended to announce his true identity to Zoe's family at their wedding ceremony. He believed the Lopez family and the Black family would not have any objections against their marriage once they learned about his true identity. She cast a fleeting glance at him and snapped, No way. You're unreliable. Looking resigned, he was rendered speechless. 
he knew that Zoe still assumed he was depending on the Joneses up until now. In her opinion, he was a useless guy. Someone who was not capable of solving the issues. She was facing at the moment. I've already come up with a plan which can ensure they have no grounds to object to our marriage. Zoe smiled craftily before quickly lowering her head to hide the embarrassment on her face. What's this brilliant plan of yours, he asked, curiosity written all over his face. We, we, Zoe stammered, having a hard time revealing her plan. The Protector Chapter 967 Levi scratched his head, looking puzzled. What exactly is on your mind? Despite him being the god of war, who had vast experience on the battlefields, he knew nothing about relationships. Therefore, he had no idea how to gag. E. What was on Zoe's mind? The woman shot him a glare. You really can be such a blockhead sometimes. I'm thinking about getting pregnant. Hey? Oh, I, I see, it finally dawned upon him what she was thinking about. So, her getting pregnant is her plan. That's quite brilliant, actually. As soon as she's pregnant, her family will have no choice but to accept our marriage. As long as I'm pregnant, there's nothing the Lopez family and the Black family can do to stop us from marrying each other. On top of that, I'll be getting so rich at that time that they will no longer be able to exert any more control on me. I'll be free to decide who I'd like to marry, and no one will be able to stop me from doing that. Zoe announced agitatedly. Yet, Levi had his reservations. It's not very appropriate, is it? Why do you think so? You know that I'm a very conservative man. I've always wanted to give you the best of everything, and I respect you a lot. I really think we should think about getting a child after we remarry each other. Right now, we're officially still a divorced couple. Zoe, getting pregnant at this juncture will do nothing but tarnish your reputation, and that's the last thing I want to see. It pains me to see you suffer something like that as you've had gone through more than your share of hardships during these years. So, why don't we only think about having a child after we remarry each other? Levi tried to convince Zoe earnestly. The latter was touched by his words. Levi, you're indeed the nice I've always thought you to be. I'm so glad because it means that all the effort I've made so far for you are worthwhile. Listen to me having a kid is the only way we can get rid of my family. Zoe insisted with tears welled up in her eyes. She did not mind going through some hardships upon seeing how much Levi cared about her. All right, I'll do as you say. Levi beamed at her reply. He had always wanted to have a kid with her. However, he dared not propose that idea, considering he had owed her too much over the past six years. We can't do anything frisky tonight. I'll be busy later, Levi spoke all of a sudden. He was not in the mood to spend time with Zoe in bed because Jonah and his family were coming to kill him soon. Who said we're going to do it tonight? The woman shot him a supercilious glance. Levi suddenly felt himself heat up and quickly walked out of the mansion to let the breeze cool him down. With one wave of his hands, someone materialized from the darkness. How can I help you, God of War? Tell everyone guarding the neighborhood to retreat immediately. Understood. Soon. The heavily guarded neighborhood became defenseless after all Levi's men had left on his order. The action was necessary. Levi was worried that Jonah's men might not be able to get through the line of defense. As the sky grew darker, Levi sipped on his cup of tea, enjoying the cool breeze outside the manor. At the same time, Jonah and all his men had gathered outside Levi's neighborhood. Everyone, it's time we get to work. We have to kill Emma Jones and her son at all costs. Tonight. Jonah commanded. Six skilled fighters from Tang sect, as well as eighteen skilled fighters from the garrison. Family, 
crept their way into the neighborhood. They soon vanished into the darkness. Dozens of skilled fighters were dispatched by Jonah to guard the surroundings of the neighborhood. They were to make sure no one was able to escape. They had found out Levi's address ages ago, so they were quite familiar with the layout of the neighborhood after meticulously studying it. The 18 skilled fighters from the garrison family were entrusted with the task to guard all the exits of the neighborhood. They were to ensure that Levi would not be able to run away. Meanwhile, the six skilled fighters from Tang sect were tasked to kill Levi and his mother. While Levi was examining a stain on his shirt in front of the main gate of the mansion, the six skilled fighters from Tang sect started closing in on him from less than 50 meters away. That's Levi Garrison. Kill him. After making sure the man they saw was indeed Levi, the six skilled fighters launched their attack on him. The Protector Chapter 968 Swish, swish, swish. The rustling sound of something moving in the air at a rapid speed could be heard. Up to a hundred concealed weapons swooped down at Levi dangerously at one go. The skilled fighters from Tang sect were aiming to kill Levi with a single strike. They were very sure that their concealed weapons would be able to kill the man, leaving his body filled with holes. Clank! 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 Much to their consternation, Sparks flew and the sound of metal on metal could be heard. What is this sorcery? Is he wearing armor? Let's give it another go. The skilled fighters from Tang sect reacted promptly by launching another round of attack. On Levi without further ado. Clank. Yet, the same thing happened this time their weapons were unable to pierce through. Levi's armor. Damn it. He's wearing the golden armor. It's one of our creations. One of them let out an exclamation after taking a closer look at the armor Levi was wearing. It can't be. How did he get his hands on the golden armor? The thing he's wearing looks very much like it, though. We've failed our mission. Retreat immediately. The six skilled fighters immediately retreated after a brief discussion. Levi broke into a smile as he broke into a smile. I must say, this golden armor is indeed fantastic. If Black Tortoise were here, he would have gotten injured by the concealed weapons. Even though Black Tortoise's skin is impenetrable to ordinary weapons and bullets, he is defenseless to the weapons used by the fighter of Tang sect. This golden armor Jonah gifted me is even better than all the bulletproof vests I've been wearing. Levi couldn't help but marvel at how sturdy the golden armor was. The fighters, who were guarding the exits, were horrified to see the fighters from Tang sect. Running away from Levi's manor. You guys should remain here, they told the 18 skilled fighters. Outside the neighborhood, Jonah looked very much at ease. I guess Levi and his mother have already been killed by now. I have a lot of confidence in the skilled fighters from Tang sect. At that juncture, the six skilled fighters he mentioned made a beeline for where Jonah was standing. What went wrong? Judging from their pale faces, Jonah knew their mission had gone awry. Mr. Garrison, this is bad. Levi Garrison is wearing armor that looks very much like the golden armor a creation of our sect. He can't be hurt by our concealed weapons at all. Another man from Tang sect chimed in. If my judgment is correct, he is indeed wearing a golden armor. What? How could something like this happen? Soon, a person popped up in Jonah's mind. It was the god of war whom they had gifted a golden armor earlier that day. Yet, they did not reckon that there existed any association between Levi and the god of war. One of them was the god of war of the country, whereas the other was the bastard of the prestigious garrison family. It seemed extremely unlikely that the two could have any connection. There was only one plausible reason that could explain the situation Levi just so. Happened to be wearing something that looked extremely similar to a golden armor. Indeed, it was human nature to avoid what they feared and try to convince themselves that. 
the things they feared did not exist. Levi really is a force to be reckoned with. No wonder even the god of war thinks highly of him. I think he's wearing some sort of flexible body armor, that's probably what's protect him. From some weapons. Come on, let's go and check him out ourselves. If assassination doesn't work, we should. Launch a frontal attack on him then. Let's see how he's going to defend himself this time. Jonah, together with all the skilled fighters, charged toward Levi's manor. The eighteen skilled fighters guarding the exits began advancing on the manor too. Meanwhile, Levi was still sitting leisurely at the gate of the mansion. Just then, silhouettes of Jonah's people emerged from the darkness. Levi Garrison, today is your doomsday. You are going to die a horrible death this time. At Jonah's command, the eighteen skilled fighters charged at Levi in unison. The Protector Chapter 969 The Garrison family had spent a fortune on training the eighteen skilled fighters who had never acted together before that day. They were confident that their joined forces would be capable of finishing off anyone. Exuding a murderous aura, the skilled fighters closed in on Levi. Swish! The blades of their swords swept past the icy air toward Levi. Clank! Levi allowed them to slash his body with the swords, not doing anything to defend himself. To the utter dismay of the skilled fighters, only a dull thud was produced when the blades landed on Levi's body as their swords failed to cut through him. Mr. Garrison, did you see that? He's wearing a powerful armor that can protect him from the swords, one of the skilled fighters from Tang sect pointed out. Clank! 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 The eighteen skilled fighters tried attacking Levi again and again, but their efforts were futile. The blades of their swords only ended up being dented. What kind of armor is Levi Garrison wearing? His armor must be very strong because our swords are powerful enough to pierce through. Bulletproof vests made with the most advanced techniques. I have a feeling that Levi is wearing the golden armor. If he wasn't, there's no way he'll be able to last this long, Seamus whispered to his father. He's really something. Jonah tried to catch a glimpse at what Levi looked like, but he couldn't see the man's face clearly. He was standing too far away. Suddenly, a sinister glint shone in Levi's eyes while the eighteen skilled fighters were attacking him. It's my turn now. Thump. As soon as Levi spoke, he flew into action, sending the skilled fighters flying some distance away by forcefully kicking them one by one. The eighteen skilled fighters suffered from his attacks, tossed around as if they were mere figurines. Soon, all of them slumped on the ground quite far away from Levi. It was a mind-blowing sight. The garrison family from Haven could not believe their eyes. They knew the eighteen skilled fighters well enough to know that they were all extremely talented. The combative power of one of them was equal to the total combative power of ten men like Caleb. Yet, none of them had been a match for Levi. Kill him. Slaughter him now. We have to get rid of Levi tonight, or he will go on to become a great disgrace to our family. Now that even the god of war is aware of his presence, we have to kill him to spare ourselves from the embarrassment. Panic-stricken, Jonah dispatched all his men, ordering a full-blown attack on the man at once. In an instant, a hundred skilled fighters were charging toward Levi. The man approached them one step at a time. Clank! He allowed them to strike blows after blows at him, not bothering to dodge or fight back. Levi knew he was well protected by the golden armor, he would not be harmed no matter how they tried to hurt him. The skilled fighters soon discovered something bizarre. Regardless of how they swung their blades, all strikes were directed by an invisible force. Making all blows land on only Levi's body. They could never seem to reach the more vulnerable body parts of his, like his neck or his head. While Levi could withstand their attack without getting hurt, all of them were vulnerable to his attack. Thump! Thump! 
the ground Levi walked past was filled with the fighters who had collapsed. In the end, none of the skilled fighters dared to go near Levi, considering that he was literally invincible. There was nothing much all of them could do at the moment. Eventually, Levi forced them to retreat about 100 meters. He was moving closer to Jonah and his family and would reach them soon. T. This can't be happening. The eyes of Jonah and his family were filled with utter disbelief when they saw the skilled fighters being defeated by Levi so effortlessly. How can that bastard be such a prominent fighter? Why does he seem invincible? Although Levi stood meters away from them, they still could not make out his face because the surroundings were dimly lit. Kill him. Finish him off now. Jonah bellowed at the top of his lungs. At that moment, Jonah was seized by a spasm of fear seeing that Levi was only meters away from him. The latter commented with a hearty laugh, Jonah, I must say this golden armor from you is really as fabulous as you put it. I'm giving it a score of 10 out of 10 after trying it out with real weapons just now. Upon hearing his comment, Jonah and his family looked as though they had been struck by lightning. That voice certainly rings a bell. What did he say just now? A gift from us? Realization slowly dawned upon Jonah and his entire family. When did we ever give Levi a golden armor? Damn it! Could he be? Jonah and his family were mortified when they finally realized the truth. The Protector Chapter 970 Jonah was left gobsmacked. He felt as though his head was going to explode, and his eyeballs were going to pop out of their sockets any minute. Levi received a golden armor from me? Didn't I gift that to the God of War earlier today? Could Levi possibly be the God of War? How could he be such a prominent figure? While Jonah went lost in his own thoughts, Levi had already made his way right in front of them. The garrisons turned to face Levi and what greeted them was a face they had seen earlier. That day. Isn't this man the god of war? Having met during the day, the two parties encountered each other again, albeit in a much more awkward manner. Jonah, I really love this golden armor from you. It's so much better than the usual bulletproof vests I've been wearing. Levi flashed the group a good-natured smile. For some reason, Jonah and his family felt as though their legs just turned into jelly. Thud. Thud. One after another, they collapsed onto the ground and knelt before Levi. The skilled fighters standing around them were left at a loss. What are you lot waiting for? Get down on your knees right now. Jonah snarled. Thud. Immediately, all the skilled fighters were on their knees too. Levi let out an amused laugh. Why are you guys kneeling in front of me? Come on, kill me. Now. Jonah Garrison, aren't you here to kill me? The man he directed his question to was left speechless. At that moment, everyone in the Garrison family from Haven was made aware of one thing. Levi Garrison was the god of war. That was certainly a staggering discovery to them. No wonder the man had been reluctant to admit to the fact that he was one of the garrisons. No wonder he did not take the garrison clan in Oakland City seriously. No wonder he knew about the other purpose of their visit to South City. No wonder he tipped them off by saying that the bastard of their family was a tough nut to crack and advising them to bring more men with them. As it turned out, Levi was the god of war. At that moment, the garrisons from Haven realized they had made a serious misjudgment. If Levi were indeed a useless man, how could he have killed Caleb? How could he have brought his mother back with him? How could he have destroyed that tombstone? On top of that, they had made a fool out of themselves by happily telling Levi all about their plan to kill him earlier that day. After so much hassle, the bastard they had planned to kill turned out to be the god of war. We were wrong. God of war, we've made a very grave mistake. Jonah was scared out of his wits, and his body was drenched in a cold sweat. He could not believe they had just tried to kill the god of war. 
if what they did was known by the army of the Arudaya, his entire family would be massacred. They had really made a grave mistake this time. Aren't you guys an imperial family? Isn't the blood that runs in you guys a noble one? Is it appropriate of you to kneel in front of a bastard like me? Sarcasm was evident in Levi's tone. God of war, it's our honor to get down on our knees in your distinguished presence. Jonah was eager to butter the man up. Are you trying to say that I deserve to be mercilessly killed by you guys if I am not the god of war? Jonah and his family were startled when they heard Levi suddenly raise his voice. Isn't the reason why you guys have been trying so hard to hunt my mother and I down? Because you guys see us as a disgrace to the garrison family? Don't you guys think that the blood that runs in me is so filthy that I will only bring nothing but an embarrassment to the family? The man yelled furiously. This, Jonah was left stumped because it was true that they had thought of Levi and his mother that way. In their opinion, bastards did not deserve to exist in this world. I really wonder what makes you guys think you're superior to me. Is the blood that runs in you guys? Does that make you think of yourselves as nobler than us? Or is it just because you guys are part of the garrison family? Now that I'm the god of war, am I finally be good enough to deserve some respect from you? From an orphan, I fought hard and worked my way up to achieve success. Has anyone from your distinguished family achieved something like that? What about Tyrone Garrison? Isn't he the successor to the head of your family? Out of Tyrone and I, who do you think deserves more respect? Levi nearly growled at them. The Protector Chapter 971 With a note of awkwardness in his voice, Jonah responded, God of War, of course, you deserve more respect. Tyrone is nothing compared to you. Jonah spoke only the truth. No matter how powerful and influential the Garrison clan and Tyrone Garrison were, the God of War was still way out of their league. If that's the case, what gives him the right to look down on me and call me a bastard? Do he and his family have the right to treat me in such a disrespectful manner? No, of course, they don't. They have no right to be so rude to you. Jonah replied eagerly. At the same time, the man was so terrified his body was shaking. How dare they even think of killing me? Do they have what it takes to do that? Levi scoffed. Very well. You guys are free to send as many men as you like to kill me. I can easily handle them all. Thump. Thump. Jonah and his family quickly offered several bows to plead for Levi's mercy. God of war. Please spare our lives. We made a mistake by trying to kill you. We didn't know you were the God of war. The entire family pressed their heads against the ground so hard that their foreheads started bleeding. Jonah looked like he was on the brink of passing out. We will accept any request you make as long as you spare our lives, he implored in a fit of panic. He knew his entire family would be annihilated if they incurred the god of war's wrath. They should not have made their way over to South City. Never in their wildest dreams did they imagine Levi, the bastard, to turn out to be the god of war. With a disdainful smile, Levi gave his verdict. Get lost. I'm not going to kill you guys today. None of you are worth my effort, and your blood will only dirty my hands. The gifts from you lot do offer some compensation, though. They are quite to my liking. Jonah and his family let out a sigh of relief when they realized that they would not be killed. On the spot. They were glad that they had sent Levi some gifts earlier that day that gesture had. Seemingly successfully saved their lives. Will you guys be able to reach Tyrone Garrison? Levi asked them out of the blue. Why yes, we can, Jonah replied. Very well, go back and tell Tyrone that my mother and I are still alive and kicking. Ask him. To wait for me as I might decide to visit him any time when I am in a foul mood. But don't you dare reveal my identity to him. 
For the hard work, I'll reward you guys with a huge gift, Levi instructed. In quivering voices, the garrisons responded in unison, All right, we'll convey your message. To Tyrone. Get lost now then. As soon as Levi allowed them to go, all of them immediately made a run for their lives. However, Jonah and his sons did not leave right away. Instead, they approached Kieran and explained everything to him. You guys are incorrigible. Kieran was livid. No wonder Boss already knew what they were up to earlier today. They came here to kill Boss. There's nothing left to be said now. From today onward, I will have nothing to do with you. Guys. If you dare pull something like this again in the future, I will be the first to punish you. Kieran snapped angrily. Jonah and his family made their trip back to Haven that night. They knew they had to lie low during the days that followed if they wished to survive. Dad, should we inform the garrison clan about this? Should we tell them the truth? Seamus questioned. No, we shouldn't tell them anything. Judging from the God of War's tone, there must be a feud between him and the garrison clan. Do we want to get implicated by their clash? Jonah seated. No, we don't. After all, they don't take us seriously they see us as a bunch of nobodies. Everyone nodded in agreement. Make a phone call to Tyrone for me now. I'm going to convey the message to him, and then... I'll leave him to settle the mess himself. Just as Jonah was going to dial Tyrone's number, he received a call from the garrison clan. Dad, someone from the garrison clan is calling. Seems like they've gotten a sniff of what... happened already. Seamus exclaimed. Pass me the phone. Jonah picked up the call. Hello. An aged and feeble voice came from the other end. The Protector Chapter 972 Jonah Garrison, said the elderly man in a cool tone. Jonah's expression took a sharp turn, and he spoke respectfully, Greetings, Mr. Edward. Jonah's change in attitude showed just how powerful the other party truly was. The person speaking to him wasn't even a high-ranking member of the garrison clan. It was a mere servant who had more influence than Caleb. Edward was the personal attendant who had been assigned to take care of Levi's biological father, Tyrone Garrison. In fact, the man had been working by Tyrone's side ever since. Tyrone was born. It could be said that Edward was responsible for dealing with every single matter regarding Tyrone. Moreover, the man wasn't just Tyrone's bodyguard he was also the latter's right-hand man. That was the reason that Edward held incredible power within the garrison clan, even though he wasn't a member of the family. Even the master of the garrison family in Haven had to bow down to him. They were simply not on the same level. The garrison clan of Oakland City was too powerful, even a servant was seen as royalty. How did things go? Has everything been settled? Edward inquired. Obviously, Edward had already known all about Levi and Emma, despite it being a secret. Still, given the power of the garrison clan, it was just a matter of time before they learned all. About it, anyway. Uh. Jonah was a little hesitant to reply. Edward's tone turned stern immediately. He demanded, What? Don't tell me you failed? Jonah Garrison, you are the head of the Garrison clan from Haven. How could you have been bested by a bastard? The Garrison. Family and I are so disappointed in you. Seriously, what's the point of keeping trash like you? Around? All you do is embarrass the Garrison clan. Jonah grew upset after being scolded by him. He's the freaking god of war. No one can deal with someone like that. Why are you staying quiet? Are you discontent? Well, tough luck. There's no point in being discontent. My gosh, you can't even kill a bastard. You lot really are nothing but trash. Growled Edward. There's a reason I couldn't kill him. It doesn't mean the garrison family of Haven is weak. We're certainly not the trash you claim us to be, yelled Jonah angrily. 
Fine, then tell me what that reason is, said Edward in an amused tone. The reason is that this whole ordeal doesn't have much to do with me, anyway, so I don't want to do anything about it. Satisfied, scoffed Jonah. Ha! That is nothing but an excuse coming from a useless man. Well then, I will personally deal with the matter for Master Tyrone. You'll see how easy it is to kill that B asterisk TCH and that bastard, growled Edward. Jonah grinned and replied, in that case, allow me to deliver a message from Levi to Tyrone. He said he and his mother are leading a good life now, but he tells Tyrone to be patient, for there will come a day when they knock on the garrison family's door. Jonah knew that, as far as the garrisons from Oakland City were concerned, the extended family members were nothing more than mutts. Even a mere servant was allowed to insult the extended family. That poor treatment made Jonah upset, and he suddenly wanted to see Levi crush the garrison clan in Oakland City. What? Did that bastard really say that? demanded Edward, who was obviously furious. After that, the man added, you're actually delivering a message for that bastard? My gosh! Jonah, you really are an embarrassment to the garrisons. You're worse than a scoundrel. Go ahead and diss us all you like. I'll sit back and watch how miserable your attempt to kill him will be. There was no way Jonah would warn Edward about Levi's power after being insulted so thoroughly by the man like that. Jonah Garrison, just you wait, you useless piece of shit. I will report this to the higher UPS soon, and the Garrison family of Haven will definitely be disowned. After saying his piece, Edward hung up furiously. He is really too much. Jonah smashed his phone onto the floor out of anger. He later looked into the distance and murmured, Why do I get the feeling that he has the ability to crush the garrison clan in Oakland City? The Protector Chapter 973 How is that possible? So what if he is the god of war? There's no way he can do anything. To the garrison clan. The clan spent the past thousand years building a firm foundation. Said Seamus, who didn't believe in Levi. We'll have to wait and see then. On the other side of the line, Edward was still waiting in the northern region. The man looked grouchy. Trash. Utter trash. They can't even kill a bastard, so how can they be allowed to call themselves a part of the garrison clan, he fumed. That's right. The garrison clan has plenty of members in Arudaya but none of them are of any use. Stupid trash. They're not worthy of being a part of the garrison clan, even if they bear the same surname. A few others chimed in and gave their two cents as well. What do we do next, Edward? Should we deliver Levi's message to Master Tyrone? Someone asked daringly. No. We can't let this matter affect Master Tyrone at a crucial moment like this. We have to deal with everything in secret, informed Edward grimly. The succession ceremony is right around the corner, and Master Tyrone is about to be named the head of the garrison clan. If news about that B asterisk TCH and bastard gets out at a time like this, trouble will most definitely follow. Moreover, if Master Tyrone becomes the new head of the garrison clan, we will become the most powerful servants within the clan. Such a matter will affect our future as well, chimed another member. Edward's eyes shone with eccentricity as he said, Exactly. As the servants, it is our duty to protect Master Tyrone and help him become the next head. We shall kill anyone who threatens his position, be it Levi Garrison or Emma Jones. As for how we'll go about doing that, well, I have a great idea. Edward's lips curved into a cruel smile. Tyrone had long craved the position of the head of the garrison clan. The man once said that he would forego everything and be as cruel as he needed to be to claw his way up to that position. That was why the act of abandoning Emma and Levi meant nothing to him. 
compared to the position as the head of the garrison clan, Emma and Levi were nothing. Edward received a call at that moment. The call was from Damien Tyrone's legitimate son. He was the son Tyrone had with his wife, whom he married after he abandoned Levi and Emma. Edward and the others had been there at every stage of Damien's life. Hence, they knew just how cruel the man really was. Tyrone alone was a heartless and merciless being, but Damien somehow managed to be ten times worse than his father. The man will definitely be a force to be reckoned with in the future. Edward, I've learned about everything. My dad is on the verge of succeeding in obtaining the position as the head of the garrison clan. You know what will happen if those two show up at a time like this, don't you, sneered Damien. We know what to do, Mr. Damien. We will definitely kill your brother, Levi Garrison, and his mother, replied Edward was quick to speak, and he accidentally used the wrong term in the process. He is not my brother. That man is nothing but a bastard, and he is not worthy to be called. My brother. I will soon be the successor to the most prominent family in Arudaya, and he will stay a useless bastard. I'm warning you right now. Damien Garrison does not have a brother. I am. My father's only son. Do you hear me? Kill them. You must kill both that bastard and his. Mother. Do not let them survive, Damien barked endlessly on the other end of the line. All it took was one word from Edward to infuriate Damien. As far as Damien was concerned, calling Levi his brother was a huge insult. Damien regarded himself as the heir of two noble bloodlines, whereas Levi was nothing but a bastard with mixed blood. His blood is tainted, and he's inferior. How can they compare a Noble being like me to that, thing? If you fail to crush those two, you will be the ones I kill, threatened Damien grimly. The Protector Chapter 974 Edward and the others present were scared senseless. The former, in particular, realized that he had made a mistake and that the only way out of it was to kill Levi Garrison. By the way, Levi sent a message over, Mr. Damien. Edward later told Damien everything Jonah had told him. The latter was infuriated when he heard the message. What? That bastard wants to come. Over and walk into our home. I think so. I'm guessing he refused to let go of this rare opportunity after learning about his family background. He will do anything to get into the family and force the garrison clan to recognize him as a member, suggested Edward. That is ridiculous. He wants to join the garrison clan? Who does he think he is? He is. Nothing but a bastard, so he can dream on. The garrison clan is the best of the best, and we don't take in useless bastards like that. No. Way am I going to let that bastard be a member of our family and be listed in our family tree? Not a chance in hell. Damien shouted. I don't think he will let this opportunity go so easily, Mr. Damien. He already knows who he is, and he knows that his life will be elevated once he is recognized by the family. He can forget about ever stepping foot in the garrison clan home. Hell, even thinking about kneeling before us and our ancestors is a privilege he is not worthy of, roared Damien. Cruelly. Both of them misunderstood Levi's intention. They assumed that the man would be begging to be admitted into the family and be recognized as one. However, when Levi said he would be visiting the garrison family home, he meant that he would be kicking the door down and bringing chaos. And that is why you have three days. He must die in three days. That bastard has been breathing for too long as it is, and that itself is a huge enough insult to the entire garrison clan. Damien was furious and murderous when he thought about the so-called brother he had never met before. Understood. I promise it will be done discreetly. Edward took off that very night, and he brought his men with him to Southampton. The garrison clan had an enormous base in the city it was practically the economic pillar. 
of Southampton. However, it operated in the dark, so no one knew about it. Even the most prominent family in Southampton, the Goel family, was unaware of its existence. All outsiders knew was that there was a company named Pinnacle Group. They didn't realize that it was one of Tyrone's companies and that he used it to manage the Garrison clan's assets in the south. It turns out that the company was under Caleb's management. Zoe had been busy working on the new project those few days. Unfortunately, Iris came running that day, telling her that the project had hit a snag. At first, they didn't have any competitors, allowing Morris Group to take over easily. Everything had been set in stone and ready. However, a large-scale company popped out of nowhere that day, and it threatened to snatch the project away in the most domineering way. Iris had rushed over to inform Zoe about it. Which company are we talking about? asked the latter curiously. It's a company called Pinnacle Group from Southampton. It popped out of nowhere, but its powers are incredible. The company basically controls Southampton's economy, and Morris Group is definitely not its competitor, replied Iris. Zoe investigated Pinnacle Group right away. The company's information had never been a secret, but it was a little difficult to learn about them. She spent some time on it and eventually discovered something. The company is owned by Tyrone Garrison. That name sounds familiar. Where have I? Heard this name before, she murmured before she recalled who the man was, and a chill ran down her spine. She then let out a gasp. Wait, Tyrone Garrison. Isn't he Levi's biological dad? The Protector Chapter 975 Competing against the Garrison clan? What chance do we really have of winning if we do? Such a thing? Zoe's first instinct was to give up. After all, what were the chances of her actually succeeding? Especially if they already had it. Out for her. Iris' secretary walked into the office at that moment to deliver a message. The woman turned pale upon hearing Zoe's words. She then informed, Pinnacle Groups. Person in charge will be here this afternoon. I'm guessing they are here to talk about the project. You should attend that meeting. Okay. Zoe took a few deep breaths. So what if Tyrone owns the company? So what if the Garrison clan is ridiculously powerful? I'm the one who got the project first. I will not let Pinnacle Group take it away from me. Levi examined Zoe closely during lunch and commented, What's wrong? You look... troubled. It's nothing. I'm just dealing with some issues from work. She never told him about the issue with Pinnacle Group. She worried that unnecessary mayhem would ensue if he knew about Tyrone's advances. It's probably a better idea to keep quiet. After all, there is no way a puny enterprise like ours can deal with a corporate giant like that. That afternoon, a number of luxurious, black cars drove up. The people from Pinnacle Group had arrived. Zoe personally welcomed them. The ones in charge were a woman and two men. Their assistants were following close behind, and all of them were obviously out for blood. Zoe Lopez? So it really is you, said the woman before she chuckled aloud. And you are. The woman had on a pair of sunglasses, so Zoe could not recognize her. The latter trembled, and her eyes shone with surprise when the woman took her sunglasses off. She then mumbled, I it's you. You remember me? Ah, I thought you'd forgotten all about me, replied the woman as a stunning grin appeared on her face. Why you re the person in charge of Pinnacle Group? Thanks to you. I've been well after you guys chased me out of Northampton, and I am now the vice president of Pinnacle Group. The woman smiled. That woman was Lindsay Granger, Zoe's ex-BFF and senior. She was the one who brought Zoe into the field and was, in a way, the one who taught Zoe most of what she knew. Lindsay had cared for her in every way. However, 
she later discovered that it was all a lie. Lindsay had only been nice to her to get close to Levi. At the time, the man had already founded Levi Group, and his career was taking off at an incredible speed. Lindsay's greed slowly showed itself soon after. She continuously hurt Zoe from behind the scenes and created a number of illusions to make Levi misunderstand Zoe. Lindsay's worst scheme in her quest to separate the couple was having her men drag Zoe into a hotel, where they almost raped her. When Levi learned about all that, he chased Lindsay out of Northampton. Hence, the two women were now enemies. That made Lindsay an eyesore for Zoe. The latter scoffed and said, Then I guess there is no need to enter the building. Our company does not welcome vile b asterisks. What is that supposed to mean, Zoe Lopez? I am Pinnacle Group's representative. How? Dare you turn Pinnacle Group away, growled Lindsay. In the end, Zoe had no choice but to lead all of them into the building. Once they got inside the meeting room, Zoe immediately said, Let's get to the point, shall we? I'm busy. Lindsay grinned and replied, We're here about the project. We heard your company has already accepted it. That's right. The project has already been taken. You guys have no shot at obtaining it. Anymore. You can't exactly steal it now, can you? Zoe stated firmly. Lindsay smiled. We're actually here to steal that project. The woman then stood and looked her up and down before adding, Zoe, I'm sure you've Learned all about what Pinnacle Group is capable of. I am here on behalf of the company. And am commanding you to give it up. Hand the project over to us. The Protector Chapter 976 Domineering, Arrogant, and Blatant Cruelty That was Pinnacle Group's style. Lindsay and the others knew just how powerful the force supporting Pinnacle Group was. So they did not refrain from making demands. They had never been afraid of anyone because of that knowledge. In fact, the entire southern region would know about Lindsay if Pinnacle Group's motto wasn't to stay in the dark and to control everything from behind the scenes. Zoe was taken aback by the woman's direct and domineering words. They're going to snatch it away just like that? And she's daring enough to command me. Without a hint of shame. They have no right to do such shitty things. She had been tempted to give the project up when she learned that Pinnacle Group was after it. However, that option had become one she would never opt for when she laid eyes on. Lindsay. Why should I give up? Sorry, but you are not my boss. You don't have the authority to command me to do anything. Moreover, our company has already gotten the project. You guys can't snatch it. Away even if you want to, scoffed Zoe. And who told you that you already have the project? Lindsay asked cruelly. Our client, of course. We've already met and discussed everything. The project belongs to Oriental Star Group, and you guys are too late. Please leave. Zoe had just discussed the terms with the client she had even paid the deposit. It was then that Lindsay let out a small smile. Oh, the project belongs to you? Have you signed the contract then? I, blurted Zoe, who was somewhat stunned. She later added, regardless, I have already paid the deposit. If the client goes back on his word, he will have to pay for the legal damages. Zoe held her head high as she glared at Lindsay. The former suddenly received a call at that moment it was from the client. The client was willing to pay three times the legal damage to terminate their collaboration. With Morris Group. Feel free to continue competing for the project, though. At first, there weren't any viable. Competitors against Morris Group, but one showed up recently, informed the other party via. The phone. The project was more scientific in nature, so Pinnacle Group wasn't exactly equipped to be. Too involved. Getting the other party to cancel the collaboration was the most Pinnacle Group could do. As a result, 
Zoe was in fair competition against Tyrone's company. So? Are you still certain that the project is yours? Lindsay crossed her arms and asked arrogantly. You, growled Zoe. She was fuming at that moment. She had known Pinnacle Group to be powerful, but she hadn't expected them to have such a strong influence. It was strong enough to get the client to breach the contract. They did all that just to get to us. However, the more unreasonable Pinnacle Group was, the more Zoe wanted to fight. She wanted to get back at her competitor if nothing else. You've seen what we're capable of. Are you sure you want to go against us, taunted. Lindsay with a smile. We've investigated you, Ms. Zoe Lopez. Oriental Star Group won't even make it to our radar. If it doesn't have Morris Group backing it up. As far as we are concerned, Oriental Star Group is nothing but a powerless maggot, said a representative of Pinnacle Group. Everyone else chuckled tauntingly. Lindsay grinned and added, it's even less of a deal when we don't even give a shit about Morris Group. Just hand the project over without making a fuss, Zoe. There's actually something in it for you if you do so. Moreover, going against us will only destroy you. It might even get you killed. Are you threatening me? Zoe questioned sharply, her expression turning grave. Lindsay feigned innocence and claimed, how could that possibly be a threat? I am simply giving you some suggestions as your BFF. You'll get something great out of it. My BFF? I don't have friends like you. Don't bother putting up an act in front of me, Zoe. Gritted out. Haha. <laughs> You just wait and see then. Not only will this project be ours, but your company will also soon belong to us, announced Lindsay before she laughed aloud. Pinnacle Group was already planning on acquiring a few sizable enterprises, and both Oriental Star Group and Morris Group were already on their list. Oh my, how arrogant of you. The Protector Chapter 977 A voice rang up at that moment, and everyone turned to see Levi strolling into the conference room. You. Levi Garrison. Lindsay gritted her teeth, revealing her nasty nature as soon as she spotted the man. Levi had been cruel in chasing Lindsay out of the city after her evil plan was exposed. Acquiring Oriental and Morris? Dream on, woman, scoffed Levi. When Levi first heard that Pinnacle Group was there to cause trouble, he looked into the company. He was surprised to see that it belonged to his biological father, Tyrone. He had rushed over immediately after. As suspected, a meeting was ongoing. Shameless vixens like Lindsay are thriving in Pinnacle Group. Guess that proves what a terrible company Pinnacle Group really is. You're Oriental and Morris? Ha ha ha. Lindsay let out a boisterous laugh. Levi stared at her like he was looking at a lunatic. How shameless of you to say that, Levi Garrison. Oriental Star Group belongs to Zoe and might, in a way, be yours. However, what does Morris Group have anything to do with you? Scoffed Lindsay. I'm going to be frank with you all. We're definitely acquiring Morris Group, and Oriental Star Group is going down with it. Someone from the side chirped. Pinnacle Group had always operated from the dark, and Tyrone was the sole reason it was. Making itself known at that moment. Tyrone was about to inherit the position as the head of the Garrison clan in Oakland City. To achieve that, he needed to earn the approval of every member of the Garrison clan. That was why he needed ridiculously amazing achievements on his resume. The man owned corporations all over Arudaya that all operated from the shadows. Now was the moment they needed to show themselves to the world. He needed to expand their operations tenfolds within a short frame of time. Pinnacle Group, which was under Lindsay, was tasked with acquiring Morris Group and other sizable enterprises. Okay, we'll see who comes out on top, Levi replied sweetly with a smile. Tyrone wishes to acquire my company. 
ha. Dream on, old man. There's no saying which. Company will end up acquiring the other. So, Zoe, are you sure you're not going to back down, asked Lindsay. I'm very sure. Okay, just you wait then. I'll defeat you mercilessly, and after I acquire your company, I will force you to get on your knees. Lindsay and the others walked away proudly after saying their piece. Zoe bit her lip lightly before she turned to Levi and asked, So you've learned about everything. Yet. Yeah. You didn't need to hide anything from me, though. Tyrone and I are bound to meet. Eventually, he replied. She nodded. That actually makes sense. She then thought about how they were about to go to war with Tyrone's company. Pinnacle Group is too powerful. It's the secret entity controlling everything in South. Hampton. I'm not confident about going against it. She sighed. She had only been that persistent earlier because she was at odds with Lindsay. However, the difference in their power was too great in an actual war. Why are you worried? They don't get to cause mayhem in our territory, commented Levi, he. Didn't see Pinnacle Group as a threat at all. I'm not a coward, but Pinnacle Group is too strong. Even Morris Group has no shot against. It, replied Zoe exasperatedly. The difference in the strength of the two companies was too much, and it was not. Something that hard work and determination could make up for. So, are you giving up on that project? Levi asked. No way. I'll be sure to fight for it, Zoe declared firmly. She thought about how the project would elevate herself and make it so that neither the Lopez nor the Black families could control her anymore. That thought alone pumped Zoe up. You can work on other projects if you want to let this one go. Just inform Iris about it, said. Levi. You're the boss. All you have to do is say the word, and you can get another project. Levi, that project values over a hundred billion. There aren't many projects like that out. There. We can't just pick and choose to switch as we please. The Protector Chapter 978 Zoe stared at Levi incredulously. How could he change the project so casually? This is a project worth hundreds of billions. Has he gotten too used to being a layabout? How could he make everything sound so casual? Little did she know that it only took one sentence from her to change a project. The Pinnacle Group owned a large building in South City, which Lindsay and the other senior management members returned to. It's simple. Just get rid of this hundred billion technology project first. We can then chip away at Morris Group bit by bit. Lindsay and the others had already planned out the annexation in detail. They were in deep discussion when the door to the conference room was suddenly pushed. Open. Seven people walked in. An old man dressed in a green suit was leading the group. His imposing mannerism. Combined with the murderous aura he emitted made everyone present hold their breaths. W. Welcome, M.M.R. Edward, thank you for honoring us with your presence. W. We apologize. 4. The few senior management members of Pinnacle Group immediately knelt down in his presence. Kneel immediately. Trembling with trepidation, Lindsay and the rest all got on their knees. The Garrison clan imposed very strict rules on their members, they were expected to kneel. The moment any of them met a person of high ranking. Otherwise, it would be considered as a show of disrespect, which was akin to a straight path to hell. Jaden Yolanda, -er, the current leader of Pinnacle Group, understood that this meant that something big was about to happen. Someone of Edward's level would not appear even once in thirty years. Therefore, for him to make an appearance meant that something big was about to happen. I heard that you all have done quite well, seeing as to how you already have South Hampton's economy under your control. Continue your expansion and fight to acquire all the Property in the South. This will be of incredible help to Master Tyrone once he secures his position as the leader of the Garrison clan. 
Edward proclaimed loudly. Understood. We're now planning to acquire Morris Group that is basking in the limelight. Right now. This will definitely be an added advantage to us, Jaden informed. He then asked bravely, Are you here for that bastard, Mr. Edward? Indeed I am. He has already become a snake in the grass, and I have to get rid of him. Personally. Edward replied coldly. Which bastard? Lindsay and the rest were all puzzled by his remark. Of course I will let you know who he is. He's actually right here. He's Levi Garrison. Edward told them the gist of everything. Lindsay flew into a rage when she heard that the man Edward was referring to was Levi. People like him should have been killed a long time ago. Oh, would you mind elaborating further on why you're so angered? Edward asked her. Curiously. Levi is an unscrupulous, materialistic, and insidiously cunning person. I think he will. Definitely make use of his position as an Oakland City garrison to do something. I know his. Character very well. I have no doubt that he will use himself and his mother to threaten the garrison clan. Edward turned furious. Indeed, once a bastard, always a bastard. So what if he has noble blood running through his veins? Clearly, he's a bastard who's unworthy of belonging in our family. How can such a despicable person call himself a garrison when he is filled with nothing but deep-rooted shamelessness? Edward felt that Levi had become a huge invisible threat. Die, the bastard must die, the former shouted vehemently. Mr. Edward, how do you propose we deal with him? Will you be personally handling it? Jaden asked. Would it be overkill to have Edward deal with it directly? It is not appropriate for me to do such a thing as it could impact Master Tyrone negatively if people notice it, Edward replied firmly. Now, you go ahead and release a kill order on the dark web. Whoever kills Levi Garrison and Emma Jones within one day will be rewarded with three billion. The Protector Chapter 979 Lindsay inhaled sharply when she heard that. Three billion just to take Levi's wretched life? Isn't that being overly generous? How could Levi the lowlife be worth that much? She was not the only one who felt that the price for Levi's head was a little too high. Nonetheless, this was Edward's command, and it was imperative that Jaden follows. Through. The man immediately released this information on the dark web. Swiftly, numerous elite fighters and assassins heeded the call. The top fighters outside of Arudaya could not do anything but watch enviously as the deadline was way too short for them to make a trip for the mission. They could barely reach Arudaya in time, let alone kill Levi. Suddenly, all the elite fighters of southern Arudaya had gathered enthusiastically. Nobody had any time to lose. After all, three billion was being offered. Mr. Edward, within thirty minutes, around one hundred top assassins have heeded the call. The number is still growing. Jaden smiled in glee as he reported to Edward. All right, no matter how much of a genius Levi Garrison is, he will not escape this time. In comparison to Jaden, Edward was completely calm. The latter was suddenly reminded of Jonah Garrison so he gave the man a call. You better watch out, Jonah, you piece of trash. You're going to see how Levi is going to die. In one day. Stunned, the other man on the line immediately shouted, Edward, listen to me and get yourself back to Oakland City as quick as you can. Tell Tyrone about this and let him handle it. Don't get yourself involved in this. Ha <laughs> ha. Why should I do that? Should I be afraid of him? I can handle something small like this on my own. Why would I need to trouble Master Tyrone? Edward was full of confidence. He could not imagine what kind of ability Levi would possess in order to survive under such extreme conditions. Fine, don't say I didn't warn you. Humph, all of you useless good-for-nothings. And you dare call yourselves garrisons. Jonah let out a bitter laugh. Another ignoramus. 
Edward completely disregarded the man's words, merely viewing him as a useless coward. Moreover, what waves could a bastard like Levi raise? Lindsay was the happiest of them all when she found out that Levi was about to die. The woman still held a deep grudge over how Levi had driven her out of the city six years ago. Revenge had always been on her mind. She had the intention to kill both Levi and Zoe, and the opportunity was being presented itself before her right now. After Levi died, she wished to torture Zoe to death. The workers of Morris Group finished their work when night fell. Levi and Zoe were about to head home when they saw Lindsay waiting for them. What's the matter? Old friends can't come looking for each other? Are you two actually going to ignore me like this? Lindsay sniggered. Can we help you? Levi asked coldly. I'm here to deliver a piece of bad news. Lindsay couldn't help but chuckle in anticipation at seeing the look on their faces. Oh. Levi was baffled. She's here to tell me what? Zoe, please give us a moment. I've something to say to him. Levi patted Zoe lightly in assurance and the woman walked to one side. All right. What sort of news are you here to tell me? Levi asked. You're about to die. Lindsay stared at Levi, a ferocious expression playing on her face. You will not live to see tomorrow morning's sun. I've been waiting for this day to come for a very long time. It's a pity that you'll be unable to watch how I'll torture Zoe after your death. Don't worry though, she will surely come and keep you company in hell. Lindsay then let out a loud laugh maniacally. I'm about to die? Ha ha ha. Upon seeing Levi laugh, Lindsay looked at him, confused. Wasn't, wasn't he afraid of death? I'm telling you, you are definitely going to die soon, despite who you may be. She gritted her teeth in anger. With a deepened smile, the man said, Let's have a bet, shall we? I bet that I will still be alive. Tomorrow. Just you wait and see. The Protector Chapter 980 All right, if I see you alive tomorrow, I'll kneel in front of you right here, at your company. Entrance. Lindsay agreed to the bet he proposed right away. She knew about the plans that had been set in motion and also knew that Edward was the one overlooking the fight. There was no way Levi will be able to avoid death. This was why she was able to engage in the bet. All right. Levi then approached Zoe from behind. The latter asked curiously, why was Lindsay look for you? She says she wants to kneel in front of me tomorrow, Levi answered nonchalantly. The woman stared at him with astonishment. Oh? Has Lindsay gone mad? She actually wants to kneel in front of you. She might have just found her conscience. We shall wait to watch her kneel tomorrow. Zoe was still befuddled by the whole situation. That's strange. Why would she suddenly say such an absurd thing? After dinner that night, Levi left the manor. From what Lindsay had told him, he knew that the garrison clan was about to take action on him. The matter was no longer about the different branch families. It was definitely the garrison clan from Oakland City. Hence, he needed to do some preparation to counter their attacks. Levi soon arrived at the war zone compound. Phoenix, run a check on all the strangers that have entered South City today and sieve out. All the targets. Levi commanded. All right, but there is a certain level of difficulty here. I will need to activate the Iron Brigades. Skynet in order to run such a check. Phoenix frowned. Levi nodded. All right, I'll grant you the access authority. The Iron Brigade's Skynet would aid Phoenix's investigation as it covered every corner of the city. This would mean that the elite fighters, who had come into the city to murder Levi, had nowhere to hide. They were all covered by this Skynet. At the same time, get the cavalry regiment ready. When Phoenix confirms the targets, Azure Dragon, get rid of every one of them. Yes, sir. Azure Dragon nodded. 
After giving all the instructions, Levi headed home to accompany his mother and Zoe as if nothing had happened. Meanwhile, at Golden Plaza, Edward and Jaden, together with the rest of them, were paying constant close attention to the situation. Lindsay was very concerned about this particular matter, so she had requested to stay. Mr. Edward, up till now, 388 elite fighters have arrived. They numbers are growing, and it is expected to grow till 500 before 12 o'clock. Jaden chuckled quietly. 500 elite fighters? No matter how powerful he claims to be, Levi won't know what hit him. All of them are top assassins. He will have no chance at survival. Edward growled coldly. This was because they had purposely set a prerequisite when they released the mission on. The dark web only top elites were allowed to take up this mission. Levi was about to be assassinated by the top 500 elite fighters. Lindsay was extremely excited to hear of such plans. Death will surely claim Levi, even if the man has ten lives. How could he place such a bet saying that he will survive the attacks? Ha, huh, what a joke. Levi Garrison, you still want me to kneel before you? That won't ever happen. You will never have such an opportunity in this lifetime. I will not give it to you. Finally, twelve o'clock arrived. How many people have now gathered? Edward questioned. Damien had already pressed him about the situation once. It seemed like the garrison clan of Oakland City was growing anxious about the matter. There's currently a total of 538 people. The reward is abundant, so... People are rushing to make their way here. Jaden informed gleefully. All right, let them begin their hunt. Edward commanded. The leader of Pinnacle Group immediately released the command in the dark web. Commence action. Levi, don't blame me for killing you. Bastards simply have no place in this world. A chilly glare flashed across Edward's eyes. Once the command aired, people began hunting Levi Garrison, roaming every corner of South City for him. Many fixed their eyes on Levi's residence, planning to target him there. The Protector Chapter 981 Levi was already serenely asleep in his bed. He knew nobody would be able to get close to his manor that night. At the war zone compound, Phoenix was busy controlling a few computers. There were dense red dots on the map above. The red dots indicated their targets the elite fighters who had heeded the garrison clans. Call to assassinate Levi. They have started to take action. Through the Skynet surveillance, all the assassins were clearly seen moving towards the city center. All right, let the cavalry regiment begin action. Phoenix ordered. On top of that, there are other people who are still trying to get into South City, she informed. Leave that matter to us. From now on, we will not allow anyone to enter the city. Azure Dragon and Kirin, together with their team, soon began to take action, keeping all the elite fighters from entering the city to join the hunt. Amongst these elite fighters, the speediest team had to be the Southeastern Tigers. These three brothers had been practicing martial arts since they were young and were incredibly skilled. They made their way near Levi's Manor very quickly. We're the first to arrive here. Once we kill Levi and his mother, the reward of three billion will be ours. With excitement in their eyes, the southeastern tigers rushed into the manor. However, at the very next moment, two figures appeared in front of them. The two of them were Lion Fang Knights. Bang! Bang! Zlop! In an instant, the southeastern tigers lost their consciousness and fell onto the ground. More assassins soon emerged around the manor. The moment they attempted to enter the Residents, a few more figures appeared before them. They all shared one similarity they were all Lion Fang Knights. One by one, they disappeared. For each assassin that popped up, another would definitely vanish. The number of assassins who arrived was rising rapidly. One hundred. Two hundred. 
500, 538. In the end, more than 500 people had disappeared none of them had managed to get close to the manor. Once all the assassins had been taken care of, 18 figures around the manor dissipated immediately. The cavalry regiment had completed their mission. At the Golden Plaza, Jaden and the rest could not help feeling a little anxious. It's already been half an hour. Why has there been no news at all? They began pacing up and down the room. Lindsay was not present there. She had left when she found out that the elite fighters were headed to kill Levi. Mr. Edward, should I send someone there to check what's going on? Jaden asked. Worriedly. There is no need for that. Such big movements will only attract attention. We cannot reveal our identities, Edward cautioned. Can't you all have a little patience? What are you afraid of? You think Levi did not die? That'll be impossible. Edward shot daggers at all of them. Understood. So, everyone continued waiting with bated breath. However, another hour soon passed, and something had yet to happen. By now, Edward could no longer maintain his calm composure. How could 500 elite fighters take so long to kill Levi and his mother? Something must have gone wrong. Someone analyzed the situation and insinuated, let's wait a little longer. There could have been a conflict when they were fighting over the job. After all, the killer gets three billion. Anyone would fight for this. That's true. Out of more than 500 people, there will only be one person or one team. That will end up with that three billion. They must all be fighting to murder Levi right now. Edward agreed with such an analysis. Hence, everyone continued waiting. However, another hour passed with no news being reported. This. Edward was growing increasingly impatient. Oh no, oh no. At that moment, someone ran in bearing bad news. The Protector Chapter 982. What happened? Edward immediately questioned. The experts have vanished inexplicably, all 538 of them. It's as if they were never even here. What? Everyone felt as if they had been struck by lightning when they heard this piece of shocking news. What? They all vanished? Every single one of them. Edward was in shock and disbelief, just like everyone else around him. That's right. It's too strange. Everyone actually disappeared. On top of that, there was no sign of fight nor struggle at the scene. None of them actually reached Levi's residence. They just vanished into thin air, the person reported in a hurry. How is that even possible? 500 over elite fighters disappearing into thin air? That's clearly not possible. Jaden was shocked to the core. Edward took a deep breath before he spoke. Someone must have taken action against them. Otherwise, how can one explain the disappearance of more than 500 elite fighters? Such an occurrence is simply absurd. Everyone was just as confused as him. But who has the ability to make more than 500 elite fighters suddenly disappear without a trace? Such a feat is clearly impossible. Yes, who could possess such abilities and power? It definitely can't be Levi, he doesn't have such strong abilities. Levi was the first person they eliminated from their list of possible suspects. Edward suddenly thought of something and asked, has there been someone prominent who arrived here not too long ago? Come to think of it, Mr. Edward, there is indeed someone prominent here. The God of War is here, and he has apparently killed a number of prominent figures, Jaden told him. Then, it must have been the God of War who noticed these elite fighters. With his power, he can definitely make more than 500 people disappear instantly. Edward contemplated out loud. In this case, is Levi really that lucky? Did the God of War actually save his life? Jaden 
exclaimed helplessly. Edward was suddenly reminded of Jonah's warning. The latter had already warned him not to take action. What could the garrison family of Haven find difficult about killing a bastard? How can that be possible? I guess Jonah and the rest have already met the god of war. Everything soon made sense to Edward. Yes, that's possible. I heard that Jonah was once saved by Kieran, who reports to the god of war. Hence, it's only logical that he would not dare to do anything under their watchful eye. Jaden affirmed Edward's speculation. Bang! Edward slammed his hands on the table violently. That's to say, as long as we are here, we will not be able to kill Levi. Edward snarled. It seems like it. Whatever we do will be observed by the god of war, and there is no way of escaping his scope. How can one bastard be so lucky? Edward sneered. Damien had said that the rest of them would have to die if the bastard did not. Think of a way to get Levi and his mother out of here. Get them to a place where we are not. Under the sight of the god of war. Edward ordered as he tried to keep the tone of exasperation out of his voice. Yes, sir. Oh yes, Mr. Edward, I've heard that the god of war is also a garrison. Could he be one of the garrisons of Oakland City? Apart from the garrison clan of Oakland City, no other garrison branch has the ability to produce a superior talent like this. Jaden could not help but ask. Oh yes, when the god of war appeared out of nowhere, we assumed that he was a garrison. Talent. However, after we investigated, we found out that it was not so. Both the Grand Master and Master Tyrone wishes he were a garrison too. If the god of war belongs to the garrison clan of Oakland City, our position will surely be further elevated. The Protector Chapter 983 Edward was hopeful as well. The Grand Master, Kenny Garrison, Tyrone's father, who was also Levi's supposed grandfather, had once said that if they were ever to meet the god of war, the man was to be their god-grandson. They shared the same last name anyway, their positions and ranks also perfectly matched. Come on, if this bastard had even one-tenth of the god of war's powers, would the garrison clan need to kill him? Master Tyrone and even the Grand Master himself would need to plead for him to return to the family. Edward sighed. Jaden allowed himself to smile. How could you say such a thing, Mr. Edward? How could you compare a bastard to the god of war? There is no point of comparison between the two of them at all. That's true. The bastard is miles and miles beneath the god of war. Edward's eyes scanned the room before he said, Think about how we can get the two of them out of there. To which Jaden replied, Mr. Edward, I have an idea. Out with it then. Mr. Edward, you could use the garrison clan of Oakland City's name to issue a command to the Southampton's Joneses. You could instruct them to bring Emma Jones home and reinstate her identity as a Jones. With that, Emma and Levi will definitely leave for the Jones residence. By then, won't they be ready for slaughter? Jaden chuckled menacingly after he shared his thoughts. Edward nodded in satisfaction, saying, Brilliant. We will go with what you have proposed. Then. He then added, I will arrange for a group of top assassins to lie in ambush throughout their journey. The moment Levi appears in Southampton, they will instantly decimate him. That night itself, Edward brought his men to the Jones residence in Southampton. Michael, since Emma has been freed, reinstate her identity. This is an order from the Garrison clan. Edward delivered his command directly. Michael, the head of the Joneses, did not think too much about such an order. When he heard that he was allowed to bring Emma home, he was very emotional and immediately agreed to do so. The next day, everything went about as normal among Levi's family, it was as if nothing had happened. However, a huge earthquake had occurred last night. 
Zoe and Emma were completely ignorant about it. Zoe, you should head to work first. I have something to do here, Levi informed. He then headed to the Warzone compound to find out more about last night's situation. Lindsay was hiding in a dark corner in front of the Morris Group building, observing her surroundings the entire time she was there. She was camped out there to confirm Levi's death. She had resorted to such measures as Jaden had not cared to update her on anything. Oh? Only Zoe is here. And she's walking in such a hurry? Levi is definitely dead. Lindsay almost laughed out loud. Her most hated enemy was finally dead. Levi, take a look at how I will torture Zoe now. Lindsay laughed once more before she put on her shades and walked towards the entrance. Of Morris Group. I'm here for Zoe. She walked into Zoe's office with an air of arrogance. Oh, you're still in the mood to come. To work, Ms. Lopez? Why don't I see you crying? Such a statement made Zoe very confused. What's up with Lindsay? Is there something wrong with her? She said she wanted to kneel in front of Levi yesterday, and here she is today, spouting. Strange things. What's wrong with her? Are you all right? Zoe asked. I'm just here to see you. Mentally, you're a lot stronger than I expected you to be. And here I was expecting you to collapse. Or do you actually not love Levi nor care about him at all? Lindsay was intrigued by how the other woman behaved, it was as if nothing had happened. What do you mean I don't care about him? Of course I love him. Zoe was getting more and more befuddled. What is she even doing here? At that very moment, the office door opened, and in walked Levi. Ghost. Lindsay screamed out loud when she saw him. The Protector Chapter 984 Ghost Zoe grew even more confused. Why on earth is Lindsay spouting nonsense? Do I look like a ghost to you? Levi chuckled at her question. Lindsay gawked at the man with a frightened and incredulous expression. She's acting really weird. Why does she keep talking gibberish? Zoe's beautiful brows furrowed slightly, and bewilderment glinted in her big, round eyes. She's here to kneel before me. With that, Levi dragged the terrified woman out of the office and to the front of the company's entrance. Only then did Lindsay slowly regain her composure. You. You're not dead, she asked in disbelief. I told you I wouldn't die, didn't I? Levi chuckled. The woman hurriedly sent a text to seek confirmation on the matter, and Jaden soon verified that Levi's death did not occur as planned. How are you still alive? It should have been impossible. She couldn't wrap her head around this fact. Why do you say so? Did you send someone to murder me? The grin on Levi's face grew even wider as he spoke. No, no. I should actually get going. Turning around. Lindsay tried to scurry away. Hold on. Did I say you could leave? Levi's voice echoed in her ears. What? How can you stop me from leaving? What are you trying to do, she retorted. Fearlessly. I'm not scared of him. He's just an illegitimate bastard who's going to lose his life anytime. Do you still remember our bet yesterday? His words made Lindsay's expression fall. Yet, the woman gritted her teeth, denying it. Our bet? What bet are you talking about? I don't know a thing about it. Besides, you're not qualified to have ever placed a bet with me, she added. You said it right here yesterday evening. You told me that if I'm still alive today, you'll kneel. Before me now, Levi stated slowly, enunciating every word. No way. No such thing happened. Why would I agree to such a lame bet? Lindsay denied. Adamantly. Move aside. I'm leaving. She attempted to shove him out of the way, but he caught a hold of her and said, I'll let you. Go only if you kneel to me. Levi's voice was ice cold and intimidating. Lindsay's face flushed in embarrassment. 
Of course I remember the bet. But there's no way I'm going to kneel to this bastard. That'll be the humiliation of a lifetime. I'm the vice president of the Pinnacle Group and a prominent figure under the garrison clan of Oakland City. According to the norms in the upper echelons of society, I'm nobler than the others because of my close association with the garrison clan. It'll be so embarrassing if I kneel before a lowly illegitimate son like him. So there's no way I'm going to admit it. You claimed that there's a bet between us. Do you have any proof of it? She asked. Continuing to insist that she had nothing to do with whatever bet the man was talking about. Only Levi and I were here yesterday, so I'm sure he has no proof. Levi burst into mocking laughter. You want proof? I have it. He took his phone out and played a recording of what Lindsay had said yesterday. Her voice sounded from the phone speakers, and it was clear that she had indeed said she would kneel to Levi if he wasn't dead. You. You. Never had she thought that he would have recorded their conversation. She wasn't aware of the fact that Levi actually made a habit of keeping pieces of evidence. Whenever he was dealing with cunning people like her. What else do you have to say? Kneel before me now, he sneered at her. Lindsay shot him a death stare and said, So what if you have proof? The recording must be fake. Even if it's real, I was only joking. How dare you ask me to kneel? Dream on. Never in your lifetime will you be qualified for me to kneel before you. It'll be impossible for you to make me do such a thing. Lindsay continued to insist on leaving shamelessly. Levi scowled. All right. I guess there's only one way to handle a scoundrel like her. The Protector Chapter 985 The only way for me to get my point across would be me hitting her. Slap. Crisp and loud, a tight slap landed on Lindsay's cheek. She was dumbstruck by the sudden blow he had landed on her, so she stared at Levi in utter disbelief. How dare you slap me? I only did so because you refused to kneel before me. Slap. Levi then gave her another slap. Within seconds, the woman's reddened face swelled up severely. I'll hit you once more if you don't get on your knees. Slap. Are you going to kneel or not? Just when he was about to slap her for the fourth time, Lindsay fell heavily to her knees. With a thud in front of him, begging with a whimper, I. I will kneel now. Don't hit me. Anymore. Thud. 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 She knelt before Levi ten times. In the meantime, the employees of the Morris group looked at the two with curiosity in their. Eyes. Even Zoe and Iris were watching the scene play out. Iris, what's going on? Why would the arrogant Lindsay Granger kneel in front of Levi? This is unbelievable. Zoe exclaimed. A secretary beside them agreed, you're right. Lindsay is the vice president of Pinnacle. Group. Why would she do this? Iris only gave the woman an awkward smile without saying a word. Because he's the omnipotent boss of Morris Group. Staring at the scene downstairs, Zoe was intrigued by Levi, the enigmatic man. He sure is a man of mystery. Levi stood at the company's entrance and flashed Lindsay half a smile. You wouldn't have gotten slapped if you had just been honest and knelt before me. The woman scuttled away hastily once she finished kneeling to him. Her eyes were full of hostility and resentment as she left in a hurry. Six years ago, he chased me out of Northampton and that moment was the biggest shame in my life. Now, he made me go through such terrible humiliation again. Her hatred toward him began to grow even stronger. Just you wait, Levi Garrison. I won't let you off the hook for this, she growled at him. Through gritted teeth. However, Levi couldn't care less about her and her threats. You couldn't stand against me. Six years ago, let alone now. Lindsay rushed over to ask Jaden about Levi, and the latter gave her a straightforward answer, 
telling her that she had no right to inquire about the matter. It was late at night when Levi reached home. He saw Emma oozing delight and excitement when he stepped into his house. Mom, what made you so happy, he asked. Levi, your grandpa has asked me to head back to the Jones residence. He's going to reinstate me as the daughter of the Jones family and rewrite my name on the family register. In our family's ancestral shrine, his mother replied with much enthusiasm. The woman didn't have many wishes. Returning to the Jones family was one of them. Nevertheless, Levi's brows knitted together at his mother's words. The Joneses never mentioned this before. Why do they want to reinstate Mom all of a sudden? He let out a snicker as a wave of realization hit him. This must be an order from the Garrison clan. Michael must have thought the Garrison clan has decided to let bygones be bygones and thinks that they've stopped going against Mom. And I little does he know that this is just a scheme of theirs. The Garrison clan is trying to lure us out of here so that they can kill us on the way to the Jones residence or in South Hampton. Michael came to pick Emma up himself the next day. The father and daughter duo delightedly chatted for a while upon seeing each other. Emma asked inquisitively, Dad, did the Garrison clan really ask you to reinstate me as your daughter? Does this mean they won't pursue the matter anymore? Michael let out a light laugh while nodding his head. That's for sure. I believe they will stop. Holding you accountable. That's why I'm allowing you to come back home. She shed tears of joy at the news. Finally, my son and I are safe. We can now live in peace. Levi chose not to debunk the scheme too early. I'm okay with it as long as mom is happy. The Protector Chapter 986 Mr. Gary Levi, let's head off then. Thankfully, Michael reacted quickly enough not to address Levi wrongly. Sure, let's get moving. Soon, a large convoy of the Jones family's luxurious cars could be seen headed to South Hampton. This time, Michael had employed the most impressive homecoming etiquette because of the guilt he felt toward his daughter and Levi's status. In the car, Emma could barely contain her eagerness to head home. The Garrison clan has finally overlooked the grudges between us. Hence, I can now live a worry-free life with dignity. The moment the convoy of luxurious cars departed, Edward was notified right away. All right, we should get going too. It's time to send Levi a great gift, Edward said with a Sneer. The Jones family's cars soon crossed the border into Southampton, heading toward the suburbs, where the Jones residence was located. Emma had fallen asleep on the way there. Gazing at the woman, Levi made a vow in his heart. Mom, I'll protect your dream and hopes. There's no way I'll let the Garrison clan harm us. On the other hand, Emma's father was engrossed in his grand plans for his family. With his mother around, Levi had no choice but to accept this man as his grandpa. As a result, the future of the Jones family seemed secured. Bang! The convoy of cars screeched to a stop abruptly. What's going on? Michael immediately shouted, demanding answers. A group of fighters dressed in black appeared on both sides of the road with murderous looks on their faces. Michael got out of the car and saw a few familiar faces, including Edwards. Mr. Edward, what is the meaning of this? The man was baffled by what he saw. Ha ha ha. The god of war was present in the vicinity of Levi and his mom's place, so it was inconvenient for us to make any moves against the two. That's why we lured them out. Thanks to you, we now have a golden opportunity to seize them. Edward let out a sinister laugh. Only then did Michael realize that he had been fooled. I was wondering why the Garrison clan chose to let go of the enmity out of the blue. They even allowed Emma to join the Jones family again. Turns out that it was just a scheme to lure Levi out to his death. Moments later, Emma got out of the car too, and she shuddered the second she laid eyes on Edward. 
I can never forget this man. After all, he's Tyrone Garrison's butler. Ms. Jones, we meet again. It's been thirty years, Edward said with a smile. However, his tone soon turned vicious. It's a shame that I'll have to bid farewell to you when... We've just met. Emma gave him a bitter smile. Why can't you guys let my son and I off? Ha ha ha. No way. You and that bastard don't deserve to live. How can you not understand? This even after thirty years. Edward laughed out loud scornfully at her. What about Tyrone? Can he really bear to kill me in his own flesh and blood, the woman? Questioned exasperatedly. Edward only sniggered in response. His own flesh and blood? Master Tyrone has only one. Son Damien Garrison. Olivia Garcia is his only wife. Who are you two in the eyes of Master Tyrone? Does he even know you? Stop humiliating. Yourself. You'll never be able to marry into the Garrison clan. Edward's insults were like a sharp blade that was stabbing Emma's heart over and over. Again. The immense heartache made her feel as if her heart was bleeding. You, together with that bastard you gave birth to, will vanish forever today. Master Tyrone. Will not be troubled any more. The man broke into a fit of laughter after speaking. Do you mean we're going to die? Levi asked suddenly. Are you the bastard? Edward asked him in return, his eyes ablaze with anger. Levi sneered in an icy voice, if my mom wasn't beside me now, you would have been dead. After you said such things. The Protector Chapter 987 He refused to show the violet and murderous side of him in front of his mother. Otherwise. These people would have been long dead. Emma stared intently at her son, and a pang of terror washed over her once she caught a glimpse of brutality in him. Levi's words briefly stunned Edward and his men. How arrogant. You actually think you can kill Mr. Edward? That's ridiculous. How dare a bastard like you be so boastful? You're digging your own grave. Edward's men retorted in anger. Unexpectedly, Edward grinned instead of growing mad. That's the difference between Mr. Damien and this bastard. Mr. Damien proves himself with his ability but this bastard is all. Bark and no bite. The two of them are worlds apart. Right then, Michael warned him coldly, mind your language, Edward. You despicable old. Coot. Edward and his men could not believe what they had just heard from the head of the Joneses. What? Michael, how dare you talk back to us? You sure have got a lot of nerve. All this while, a mere servant like Caleb was sufficient to oppress the entire Jones family. Michael used to be too timid to utter a word in the presence of the Garrison clan. But he had the guts to shout at Edward today. His behavior was totally unacceptable in their eyes, they didn't know that the man was completely unafraid of them now. Michael smirked. Why should I be afraid when Levi is here? Damn you, Michael. How dare you speak to me that way? Believe it or not, I can get rid of the entire Jones family with only a few words. Edward shrieked in rage. Michael's heart skipped a beat at the man's threat. Caleb alone not to mention Edward had the capability to wipe out the Jones family. Such a feat was a piece of cake for them, they were way too powerful. I don't believe you. The Garrison clan has always been haughty in Oakland City, and now... You're behaving atrociously everywhere else. Do you really think no one is able to stand against you? Michael refuted. Are you really going to side with the bastard and his mom against our family? Edward shot daggers at him. Yes. So what if we go against you? We're not afraid at all. Mia, the head of the Joneses, suddenly declared. Yes. No one can touch my daughter and grandson as long as I'm around. Not only will I protect them, but I'll reinstate them. She's my daughter and a part of the Jones family. Michael bellowed firmly. 
Edward was enraged by his words. Wherever he went, everyone had revered, no one had dared to oppose the garrison clan. The Joneses were the first. They had actually outrightly challenged the majestic garrison clan. According to the rules set by the garrison clan in Oakland City, all the Joneses had to be slaughtered for this act alone. Fine. You and your family are out of your minds for wishing to go against the garrison clan. You lot indeed have balls of steel. Edward growled. He then sneered, Do you really want to protect the mother and son duo? How are you going to do that? Or does the Jones family have what it takes to save them? What a joke! The man waved his hand, and dozens of fighters showed up instantly. He had brought these highly skilled fighters from the garrison clan along with him. Every one of them was comparable to Caleb. There was no way out for the Joneses today. I'll protect them even if it costs my life. Michael went all out, not just for his family's sake, but also for Levi to see his determination. You can't protect the Jones family. Edward was merciless. What if we join him? A voice suddenly rang out. Charge! At the next second, countless figures emerged from the woods on both sides of the road. About a thousand of them appeared on each side a large crowd forming behind and in front of them. The men surrounded the place in no time. The Protector Chapter 988 Such a massive formation startled everyone, including Edward and his fighters. Never had they expected there to be so many men waiting in ambush. Despite their unparalleled capabilities, Edward and his fighters couldn't help panicking on the inside. The Joneses were taken aback by such a sight, but they soon snapped back to their senses and were over the moon when they recognized the faces of some of those men. Among the crowd stood an old man he was no one other than Zabian. Zabian stepped forward and bellowed, Zabian Goel and the top hundred prominent families from Southampton are here to welcome Ms. Jones. The rest of the men gathered around him followed his lead and shouted, Welcome home. Ms. Jones. Their deafening voices shook everyone present to the core. Meanwhile, Emma gaped at them in astonishment and disbelief. What's going on here? Zabian cast a glance at Michael. What are you waiting for? Take Ms. Jones home now. Snapping out of his trance, Michael glanced at Edward, hinting to Zabian that the latter end. His fighters were still in his way. Squinting his eyes slightly, Zabian said in a cold voice, Who dares stand in the way of the top hundred prominent families from Southampton? Yes. Who dares stop us from welcoming them home? The others followed and yelled. This is ridiculous. Fury spiked within Edward at the sight of the huge crowd. I thought the Joneses were the only ones who had the audacity to resist the garrison clan. But now, even the top hundred prominent families from Southampton are on Emma's side. Are they trying to challenge our authority? Hold on. Don't you dare leave. With a dignified expression, Edward scanned through Zabian and his men. The garrison clan demands Emma Jones and her son's lives to be taken. Do you understand? Leave now. No outsider is allowed to meddle in this matter, especially peasants like you. Someone from the garrison clan reprimanded. Hearing that, Zabian chuckled. Firstly, Southampton is our territory. Secondly, Ms. Jones is under our protection, so one shall touch her. That's right. None of you can oppress us in our territory. Michael, take them away. I'll see who dares to stop you from leaving. We don't go around. Stirring up trouble, but we're not cowards. We'll go all out to fight against anyone who provokes us. Zabian was adamant in his decision, undaunted by the fighters that were glaring his way. The attitude of the top hundred prominent families enraged the members of the garrison. Clan. Since when does the garrison clan from Oakland City have no authority here? Are these people mad? How dare they resist us and meddle in our affairs? Zabian, have you thought this through? 
Are you sure you want to poke your nose into the garrison clan's affairs? Edward scowled. Yes, I'm sure. Whoever lays a hand on Ms. Jones and Mr. Garrison will be considered our enemy. We'll fight with all we have even if we're no match for you. So what if you're members of the Garrison clan? We're not afraid of you. We'll not let you off since you're causing havoc in our territory. Zabian squared them up, showing the resolution of the prominent families to war to the knife. Edward was now smoldering with rage. There's surely a bunch of lunatics if they're crazy enough to cross the Garrison clan. The Jones family's cars began on their journey once again, ignoring Edward and his fighters, who were bottling up their wrath while watching them leave. The fighters clutched their weapons tightly, prepared to pounce on and kill Levi and his mom. On Edward's command. Thump. 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 The entire place was in pin-drop silence, everyone's racing heartbeats were almost audible. The Protector Chapter 989 A fight was about to break out as the tense atmosphere enveloped every one of them. If the Garrison clan made the first move, the top hundred prominent families would not back down, even if such actions would cost them their lives. The Garrison clan fighters were still waiting for Edward's command. However, the man didn't utter a word even after the Jones family's cars disappeared out of their sight. What's happening? Has Mr. Edward given up? Are we not going to kill them? The fighters were baffled. Why should the garrison clan fear these men from Southampton? Back then, even Caleb could handle them single-handedly. Staring at Edward, Zabian said, Give it a try. I don't mind sacrificing my life fighting against you. All the men on Zabian's side glared at the fighters, ready for a fight to the death. In the end, Edward didn't give the killing command, allowing the Jones family's cars to drive away. Retreat. Zabian instructed, and the top hundred prominent families left in unison. Soon, only Edward and his fighters were left standing there. Mr. Edward. Why didn't you give us the command to kill them? Puzzled, his men questioned him. Edward heaved a sigh. I don't understand why the top hundred prominent families stood up. For Emma. What makes them so determined to do so? They didn't relent, even after we warned them. The others couldn't understand why that had happened either. We have nothing to fear, Mr. Edward. They only had a few thousand men. It wasn't a threat to us at all. Yes, I'm aware of that. But if we chose to start a fight, both of us would have gotten hurt. Badly. After all, there are only dozens of men with us now. They outnumbered us greatly. Besides, the news will get about if we make a big deal out of this. Edward analyzed the situation and broke it down for the fighters to understand. You're right. If we pushed them over the edge, they might tell the whole Arudaya about our deeds. But are we just going to endure their disrespect? Edward sneered, what else can we do? Kill them? Do you think that is possible? Let's head back first. We need to strategize our next move. This time, the garrison clan had lost miserably. We could have killed them without breaking a sweat, but the prominent families from South Hampton saved them. Something is not right. Back then, Caleb alone could oppress the entire South Hampton, but the people are now willing to risk their lives to protect the mother and son duo. There must be something fishy going on. Meanwhile, the Jones family's cars had arrived at the Jones residence. Emma was still in a state of bewilderment. Why did the prominent families in Southampton protect me? They even had the nerve to go against the garrison clan. Before she could piece the pieces together, she found herself in front of the ancestral shrine. There was a set of complicated procedures to go through in accordance with the family law. Nevertheless, Michael couldn't wait any longer to write his daughter's name on the family 
register. He couldn't help shooting a few glances at Levi. However, the latter simply stroked Mia's head and said, Make it simple. Mia nodded in agreement. Right, let's make it simple. After getting approval from both Levi and the head of the family, Michael simplified the procedures. Before the last step of the reinstatement, Emma called out to Michael, causing everyone to turn and look at her with perplexed expressions. Father, are you sure about reinstating me? she asked. Yes, I'm positive. Her father nodded firmly. But the garrison clan has yet to agree to this. If you do it, you're going against them, and they'll certainly place the blame on us. Aren't you or the Joneses scared? she asked. Don't worry. I've already thought it through. How can I let my daughter and grandchild be orphaned and homeless? I'll fight against the garrison clan if they ever blame us. I'll do whatever it takes to reinstate you. Levi nodded in agreement. Why should we be afraid of the garrison clan? The Protector Chapter 990 Hearing Levi's comforting words, Michael felt assured that he was making the right decision. Whatever happens, he'll be here to back us up. I'm going to reinstate Emma Jones as a part of the Jones family in front of our ancestors. Today. Soon, the rituals ended, and Emma's name was on the family register once again. The woman had been waiting for this day for way too long. Tears of joy escaped her eyes once the ritual was completed. I thought my life was over. But much to my surprise, I reunited with my son and was reinstated as a part of the Jones family. I'll be happy even if I die now. Yet, my biggest wish is to declare in front of the garrison clan that my son isn't a bastard, but a supreme ruler, whom all of you must look up to. However, that's out of the question, as the garrison clan is too powerful. No matter how competent Levi is, his thirty years of accomplishments are nothing compared to the garrison clan, which has built a strong foundation over a few thousand years. After Emma's reinstatement, the Joneses from all over Arudaya called to congratulate her. Emma felt as if she was dreaming. When she used to get into trouble, all the other extended families, other than the Jones family in Southampton, shunned and cut ties with her right away. Why are they congratulating me this time? I don't get it. From Elder Goel's attitude to the prominent family's actions, everything just seems so odd. Never had she thought that things had turned out this way because of her son. At night, Emma finally had a reunion dinner with her family after thirty long years. Meanwhile, Edward and his men were still lingering somewhere in Southampton. They dared not go back without killing Levi and his mother. Damien would probably end their lives if they headed back empty-handed and bearing no good news. We can't find out why Zabian did such a thing even after knowing that it's the garrison. Clan's affair. After hours of searching, Edward and his men had managed to find nothing, not even one clue. Could it be because of Levi? That man seems mysterious to me. Someone voiced out their suspicion. Levi? You think that's actually possible? I won't need to kill him if he has the authority to command the top hundred prominent families in Southampton. If that's truly the case, Master Tyrone will bring him home, Edward refuted coldly. That's true. The bastard can't be that powerful. Everyone nodded. Just then, a call from Damien came. Edward, how's everything going? Is it settled? Three days should have been more than enough for you to carry out your task. The man's rough voice sounded on the other side of the phone. Mr. Damien, I... Edward was silent for fear of angering Tyrone's son. You've got to be kidding me. Haven't you killed that bastard? Edward shuddered at his voice. Mr. Damien, please allow me to explain. No. I don't want any excuses from you. How is it that you haven't killed him? You worthless. Piece of shit. 
his reprimand sent shivers down Edward's spine. The man knew Damien's way of doing things better than anyone else. The latter was a vicious and ruthless psycho who could take someone's life without so much as batting an eye. Imagining the consequences scared the daylights out of Edward. Mr. Damien, there's been a change in the situation. Perhaps we should rethink the decision of killing Levi, he suggested carefully. What? Why can't we kill that bastard? Are you out of your mind? Damien roared. Mr. Damien, something happened when? Do you want me to kill that bastard myself? No, Mr. Damien. You shouldn't need to handle such a small matter yourself. Small matter? It's been three days, but that bastard's still alive. And yet, here you are, telling me that it's a small matter. Damien then paused briefly, curious. Is that bastard really that strong and tenacious? Is it really so hard to kill him? The Protector Chapter 991 He's just so lucky. He managed to escape our attacks unharmed every time we tried. Anything. Edward then went on to explain everything that had happened. Hmm. Logically, the bastard should have been starved to death much earlier. Yet, this low life. Lives longer than I expected. Damien abruptly changed the subject. But it'll be such a disgrace that the garrison clan can't even kill a bastard. Do you know that? You've ruined our family's reputation. Kill Levi. And his mom, or you'll die. By hook or by crook, you must get this done. Do you understand? Me? Kill whoever from Southampton tries to stop you too. If any one of them spread the news, massacre the entire city. Spare no one who knows about the past incident. His violent voice echoed on the other side of the phone. Edward gasped in shock. Massacre the entire Southampton? Mr. Damien, at least a few thousand people in Southampton already know about this. Do you really want us to kill them all? His Adam's apple bobbed as he swallowed hard. Yes, kill them all. No one shall know about this. Plus, those people in Southampton are a lost cause anyway, Damien instructed resolutely. How brutal. Mr. Damien is way crueler than his father and grandmother. A man like him is surely meant to do great things. He will certainly be more accomplished than Master. Tyrone. I got it, Mr. Damien. We've only one night to do this as Levi and his mom will be going back. Tomorrow, Edward informed. All right. Kill them at all costs. I know our family has many fighters in the South. I'm now giving you the authority to mobilize them, Damien told him. Understood. Two hundred fighters gathered in front of Edward at midnight. The garrison clan had been secretly training and keeping these men at various places in the South. Such training was to ensure the influence of the most powerful ancient family across the whole of Arudaya. It was also a backup for any unforeseen circumstances. Kill them all. Edward ordered. Zabian Goel, none of you will be able to escape this tonight. You shall all rot in hell. This is the price you shall pay for going against the mighty garrison clan. A glint of malice flashed across Edward's gaze. The fighters were soon on the move, aiming to slaughter everyone in Southampton. It showed how influential the garrison clan was. Anyone who messed with them had a death wish. In the Edberg Manor, Emma was busy catching up with her family while Levi stood outside, puffing away at a cigarette. Just then, Ezra called from the West War Zone. Boss, I think I'll be able to make it to your wedding because the mission will be ending. Earlier than expected, he informed excitedly. Great, I'll be waiting. It's great that Ezra can attend my wedding. I'll be coming with Wyatt from the North. Rogier from the south, and Colton from the east. Someone from each of the nine warzonies must attend your wedding. Despite our status, 
you're still our boss and master. Hence, we can't be absent, Ezra continued enthusiastically. I'm going to attend the boss wedding together with the commander-in-chief of the nine. War zones. We have to be there to witness the most important moment in our boss life. Okay, I'll be sure to prepare a ton of wine for you guys. At that thought, Levi grew more eager for his wedding day to come. By the way, boss, there's one more thing. Before he could finish his sentence, however, Levi interrupted him. Hold on. Some things. Not right. He had sensed something unusual happening around him. The Protector Chapter 992 Tension quickly escalated when some fighters appeared around Edberg Manor. Mr. Garrison, it seems like there are many of them, Shadow from the Jones family noted as. He came closer to Levi. Over on the phone, Ezra's voice rang loud and clear in Levi's ears. Boss, did you bring anyone along? No, I came alone, Levi replied. Come on, there's no need to tackle these scums on your own. By the way, as I said, I'm done with the beasts. They're now at Southampton. As for the amethyst guards of the West, they are on the way back with the beasts. I'll ask them to go over to assist you, Ezra. Reported. Good. I was just wondering if I'll have to dirty my hands getting rid of these people, Levi. Replied with an approving nod. The amethyst guards of the West were known for striking fear in their enemies. Every single member of the group had impeccable skills they were on par with the beasts. Outside the Edberg Manor, a good 200 fighters besieged the building, they were all ready to break their way in. Make sure you spare no one, especially those on the list. A commanding voice rang out. From the multitude. Just as the 200 garrison clan fighters were about to launch the attack, shadows fleeted across their view, and the ambience chilled. The smell of death pervaded the air as the fighters saw members of the amethyst guards and the beasts appearing before them. Their gazes hardened as they moved around, eyeing the 200 men, looking like predators waiting for an opportunity to dig their bloodthirsty fangs into their prey. Fighters from the garrison clan shuddered at the sight and began to cluster together. What should we do, someone whispered. Everyone was reluctant to make the first strike. The fighters had definitely not foreseen such formidable enemies from Southampton. And it was not just one of them they had to fight there was a whole group of them ready. For battle. They were fighting against the entire coalition of the beasts and the amethyst guards how. Could they not feel afraid? Kill them. Protect the god of war. With a shout of command, the beasts and the amethyst guard charged towards their enemies like a pride of roaring lions. In no time, the two sides clashed in a fierce and intense fight. The beasts and the amethyst guards fought like animals with an insatiable appetite. Slaughtering fighters of the garrison clan without showing the slightest mercy. Never had those fighters seen anything like that. The coalition fought like madmen. Every blow they dealt was fatal, and every step they took was calculated. It was obvious that they were well trained the team worked together seamlessly. In the face of such relentless opponents, the fighters from the garrison clan crumbled in less than five minutes. Some of them collapsed while some of them fled. Go after them. Don't lose any of them. The beasts and the amethyst guards pursued their enemies like wolves hunting down headless sheep. In no time, the fighters from the garrison clan were nailed down and brought back. Even in their defeat, they still had not wrapped their heads around who they were fighting against. Not far away, Levi stood watching the bloody commotion from above as his lips curved in a proud smile. As expected, the amethyst guards never let me down. Their fighting capability is indisputable. As for the beasts, they've gotten more skilled with more experience. They instill fear wherever they go. Make sure you don't lose any of them. Levi shouted an order. Roger that, the amethyst guards and the beasts cried out in unison. 
Over on the other side, Edward sat deep on his couch with his legs crossed. He hummed a tune leisurely, anticipating good news. He had sent out the best fighters he had, so there was no way anything could go wrong. There will be a bloodshed in Southampton tonight, he jeered. This is what you get for crossing the garrison clan. Now you know we mean business if you ever go against us. A smug smile spread across his face as he crossed his hands before his chest. Bang! Click! Edward and his company jerked at the loud noise that was coming from the outside. The gate of the residence was knocked down, and the glass windows were in pieces. A few hundred men in black battle suits planted themselves right in front of the unguarded residence. Sensing an intrusion, Edward and the others got on their feet as their blood ran cold. Edward rushed outward and questioned, Who are you? Surrender yourselves. Or we'll strike, the group warned. The butler smirked and pursed his lips. Surrender? Do you even know who I am? There's nothing you can do to us. The Protector Chapter 993 Edward and the others showed no signs of retreat in the face of the beasts and the Amethyst Guards. After all, they were members of the Garrison Clan from Oakland City. No one would dare do anything to them. Everyone from the family stood unfazed as they stood guard over their residence. We don't care who you are. Seize them all. The beasts and the Amethyst Guards stormed in at the command. Although Edward and the others were skilled fighters, they were no match for the beasts. And the Amethyst Guards. They dropped to the ground in no time. Do you know what sort of crime you're committing? We're the Garrison Clan from Oakland. City. Tyrone Garrison is the family's heir and I'm his personal attendant. Let me go and I'll. Spare you, the butler yelled at the top of his voice, trying to affright the enemies. Pow. Before Edward could utter another threat. One of the fighters from the beasts kicked him in. Forcefully in the face. Do you think we care about who you are in the garrison clan? A voice followed. The only order the beasts and the amethyst guards received was to protect the god of war. They were not asked to kneel to anyone regardless of which family they were from. They would do anything to eliminate anyone who had plans to kill the god of war. Who are you people? Words seethed through Edward's mouth as he stumbled and Recovered from the blow. He guessed that these people must be related to Levi, but he had no idea who they were. But the beasts and the amethyst guards did not answer his question. Instead, they bound. The men brought them to a rugged warehouse, where all the defeated fighters from the earlier confrontation were all locked up. When Edward saw the injured and wounded fighters he had sent out there, he instantly knew that his plan had failed. They had lost to their enemies. Who are these people? Think, Edward. Wait. They're all wearing the same uniform. This can only mean one thing. Edward's blood froze, and he looked around in fear. Just as he wrapped his head around who the group of men was, the door swung opened. And a familiar figure appeared at the entrance of the warehouse. Why does this person look familiar? Edward poked his head out to get a closer look. Levi Garrison? It's actually Levi Garrison. What? How? Is this all his doing? No way. This is impossible. Terror gripped Edward, and he started stuttering. You? Why? How? You want to know my identity? Levi finished his sentence for him. Those fighters who subdued you are all my men. And yes, just in case you're wondering, I'm the one who stopped the top 100 prominent families in Southampton. I'm also why the 500 skilled fighters you gathered on the dark web went missing. Levi's answers to all the burning questions boiling in Edward's mind hit him like a bolt from the blue. When did this bastard become so powerful? I bet he didn't achieve all these on his own. After all, he's just a bastard who has Garrison's blood running in his veins. Why am I even surprised? Master Levi. 
Your servants are so glad to see you again. I always knew you would do something great one day. Knowing full well that he could not afford to get on Levi's bad side, Edward instantly changed his tone, even going as far as calling Levi master. Yes, Master Levi. We're so happy for you. We can't wait to share the good news with Master. Tyrone and the Grand Master, the other servants quickly flocked over and agreed. Really? You guys don't seem very happy though, Levi sneered as he looked at the butler. From the corner of his eyes. Give me a chance to explain myself, Master Levi. The whole family was against you last time because we didn't know you would achieve something this great. But lo and behold. You're a man of impressive accomplishments now. This is a pleasant surprise for all of us. You've surpassed a lot of the garrisons, and the whole family is extremely proud of you. I'm sure they will invite you back to the family in the most honorable fashion possible. Edward paused and surveyed Levi's face before he carefully continued, I'm sure master. Tyrone and the Grand Master will welcome you with open arms if I share this piece of good news with them. You'll return with the greatest honor. Welcome me back to the family. Who do you think the Garrison clan is? They are not worthy of me, Levi rejected crudely. The Protector Chapter 994 Everyone was dumbfounded. No one could believe what they had just heard come out of Levi's mouth. The garrison clan is not worthy of you? Who do you think you are? Not a single person in Arudaya dares mention the name of Oakland City's garrison clan. Without holding their breath. Master Levi, I'll admit you're a man of capability. The fact that you managed to catch me. Speaks a lot about your ability. But you shouldn't insult the family like this. Ultimately, they. Garrison clan is still a powerful family. Even among the younger generation of the clan, there is easily a handful of them who are far better than you. Take Mr. Damien for example he's way better than you are in every way. He's humble although he's capable, Edward reminded. Levi. Yet. Yeah. Master Levi, humility is a virtue. A humble man goes a long way. Besides, given the Clan's enormous resources and extensive connections, we're sure you'll achieve something. Greater if you return to the clan, the other servants agreed. Bullshit. Levi stared at them with a contemptuous glare. Humility? Keep your advice for the garrison clan. The family is powerful? What a joke. Don't. Even talk about the younger generation of the clan the entire family is no match for me. Levi straightened his back and cocked his head as he stood his ground before the servants. His gaze hard and unyielding. The beasts and the amethyst guards stood upright in an assertive position at the voice of the god of war. The two groups knew the man came in second to none. Levi was the one and only in the whole of Arudaya. Never had there been anyone like him and there would never be. He was the only five-star god of war. The man was way out of the league of the youngsters from the garrison clan. Edward's body shook subtly as he sensed the shift in the atmosphere. He soon got lost in Levi's commanding aura, which compelled him to revere the man. Standing before him. Yes, Master Levi, we know you're powerful like no other. We are at your mercy. Please, let us go so we can bring the good news home. The family will definitely await your glorious return, Edward begged. The other servants trailed their gaze towards Levi, looking at him imploringly. Oh? So you guys are not interested in killing me anymore? Levi questioned. The butler flashed him a servile smile and shook his head nervously. Of course not. I'm sure. The family will give you a warm welcome. You're a great asset to our family. What about my mother? Levi asked coldly. Ms. Jones is your mother, so how can we not treat her with respect? Things might indeed be a little awkward since Master Tyrone is already married, but I'll try my best to persuade him. 
I'm sure he'll allow Ms. Jones to come back. As long as you agree to return, Theral. Always be a place for your mother in the family, Edward replied. The man believed that he had made a proposal good enough to leave no room for rejection. Once Levi agreed to come back, he would have a place in the garrison family the most. Prominent family in Arudaya the head of Arudaya. There was no way Levi would turn this offer down. Levi would be able to clear Emma's name and give the woman a legitimate place in the garrison clan. Master Levi, please let us go. I'm sure your mother will be happy to hear that the family is finally acknowledging her. Doesn't she want to marry Master Tyrone? All this is not impossible. You only need to let us go. Now that you've made a name for yourself, your mother will definitely regain her place in the family. This is a chance to help her realize her dream. Other servants chimed in, trying to convince Levi. They were taking every opportunity they could to free themselves, they knew Emma Jones would be their best shot to move Levi. However, the man was clearly not buying it. His face remained unperturbed as he looked at it. them in a detached manner. Yet Edward was not planning on budging either. Master Levi. I'm sure you don't want to live in the shadow of the past anymore. This is a golden opportunity for you to undo that shameful title of a bastard. All you need to do is say, Yes and I will make sure you become a legitimate member of the Garrison Clan. The Protector Chapter 995 Levi burst out laughing upon hearing their solemn advice and desperate pleas. In front of him, the butler and the other servants exchanged startled looks in complete silence. They knew Levi was mocking them. Before long, Edward finally spoke up, Master Levi, R. You doubting what I just told you? I'm dead serious. If you let us go, we'll guarantee your glorious return, and your mother will regain her status. The garrison clan will never let go of someone as powerful as you are. I'm not doubting you I just find your stupidity amusing. I've never taken the garrison clan seriously, so why would I covet a place in the family? Also. I don't know where you got the idea from, but my mother couldn't care less about the garrison clan. Marrying Tyrone. Garrison? Who does he think he is? He doesn't deserve my mother the entire garrison. Family doesn't deserve her. Levi's voice bellowed in the spacious warehouse as he recalled the shame and pain he and his mother had gone through all those years. Edward and the others shook their heads in disbelief when they heard what he had to say. Did you just say Tyrone Garrison doesn't deserve Emma Jones? The Garrison family is the most prestigious family in all of Arudaya. You should be thankful. You have Garrison blood in your veins. This noble bloodline carries thousands of years of an ancient legacy. The Garrison family doesn't deserve Emma Jones? Who is she? She's from a mere royal family in Southampton. She's nothing compared to the Garrison family. She's despicable in our eyes. She's the one who is not worthy of the Garrison family. You must have lost your mind to say something this ridiculous. But just as they thought that that was all he had to say, Levi let off a scoff and continued. Dispassionately. You said this is an opportunity for me to give my mother a better life? It's. Exactly because I want a better life for her that I won't allow the garrison clan to ever come near her again. The family doesn't deserve her, and neither does Tyrone Garrison. Opposite him, Edward's jaw dropped at Levi's impudence. The others frowned and squinted. Their eyes, appalled by how the latter had butchered the family's honor. Geez, I can't believe you have no regard for the garrison family. Yes. You're indeed much more powerful now, but your accomplishments amount to nothing. Compared to the family. Who do you think you are? Your position in the family is only slightly higher than Amir. Butler, you're in no way close to the important figures in the family. So don't even dream about comparing yourself to the entire garrison family. Edward's patience was wearing thin under Levi's constant bashing. 
don't be too arrogant. You'll regret it when you see a glimpse of what the Garrison family can actually do. Ha! Huh. I can't wait to see that. Levi ridiculed. Edward's glare intensified, and his blood boiled as he faced the haughty man. He could not wait to let him experience what the Garrison family was capable of. Master Levi, I dare you to let me go. I'll show you what the Garrison family can do. You will. Regret not joining us when we extend an olive branch, the butler challenged. Well, I don't mind sparing your worthless life. I only need you to bring Tyrone and the others. A message they won't even have a chance to regret not killing me when I eventually set foot near the Garrison family. A confident smile broke across Levi's face as he drilled his gaze into Edward's fierce glare. The butler did not shun his stare. I'll make sure your insolent remarks reach their ear. It's time you start counting down to your death. Zap. Crack. Ow. Edward's smirk disappeared as his face contorted in pain. Levi had pushed him to the ground and broken all of his limbs. Before the other servants could react, they were also pinned to the ground. Agonizing shrieks echoed through the warehouse as the servants groaned in unbearable pain. I'll let you all go, but everyone will have to crawl back. Levi sneered as he looked at the bunch of crippled servants who were now wallowing in a pool of their own blood. It would be difficult for them to crawl their way back judging from their injury but they did not have to because the servants were all thrown out of Southampton like stray dogs at the end of the day. As Edward struggled to move, his phone rang, and a clear voice came through. Is he gone? Damien demanded. Mr. Damien, we're good as dead. Levi is not as useless as we thought he was, the butler. Replied, his voice almost breaking in tears. What? That bastard was able to do something to you lot. Damien questioned, his tone. Betraying his disbelief. The Protector Chapter 996 Yet. He's the one behind everything that has happened recently. We thought he simply got. Lucky, but it turns out that he has a trick or two up his sleeves. Edward said while panting in. Excruciating pain. Damien refused to believe what he had just heard from the butler. Are you sure? He's just an orphan. He doesn't have any connections and resources. It's impossible that he's the one. Behind all this. I can't believe he managed to defeat you. I'm just as surprised as you are, Mr. Damien. But remember that the man still has garrisons. Blood in him. He's bound to do exceptional things. As long as he has our bloodline, he'll definitely shake up the world one day. Edward tried registering the gravity of the problem to his skeptical master. True that. He's a garrison, after all. How bad can someone from our family turn out to be? Even a garrison bastard is better than an average person, Damien conceded. To people like him who grew up in a prominent family, they had always attributed success to one's bloodline. It was never a matter of individual effort whenever someone did well in life. Thus, it was natural for them to give credit to the garrisons instead of acknowledging Levi's own capability. I'm sure father and grandpa will welcome him back to the family after they find out about his success. Yes. Everyone in the family has great achievements, but we won't say no to another genius like him joining us. There are still ways in which the bastard can be of service to the family, Damien noted. The younger generation in the Garrison clan was talented and competent, and they were at the very least, top 50 in Arudaya. All of them were deserving of the family name. The fact that Levi could outdo them meant that he was not to be underestimated at all. Mr. Damien, he might be accomplished, but he's too arrogant for his own good. He has no regard for the Garrison family not even you or Master Tyrone. He even wanted me to convey a message to Master Tyrone. He said we would regret it when he made his way to the Garrison family's residence. 
Edward complained. Bang! Over on the other end, Damien slammed his fist on the table. Come again? What did he say? Sure enough, a bastard's always a bastard. He might share our noble blood, but he's obviously unrefined. I shouldn't have expected something good to come out of a bastard who grew up in a questionable environment. He's nothing compared to us. And since he has no respect for the family, I can only say it's his loss. He won't go far with his haughty attitude. His pride and his narrow-mindedness will be his undoing. Damien shouted into the phone. Damien nodded his head weakly at the man's outburst. I agree, Mr. Damien. His pride is way bigger than his accomplishments. He needs to know that Southampton is just a small part of the world. Hearing this, the other man chuckled in pride. Of course. He'll shut up once he's seen what Oakland City's garrison clan can do with his own eyes. This bastard needs to broaden his horizon instead of being so full of himself. Wait till he faces someone more powerful than himself. What should we do then, Mr. Damien? Should we still kill him? Edward asked. No. Given his ability now, he won't be a shame to the family anymore. We shall spare him. For now, Damien replied. Then what should we do about him, Mr. Damien? A slight pause came from the other side before Damien finally spoke, since he's so egoistic. And treats the family as a joke, I'll teach him a lesson myself. The butler's eyes glistered in hope when he heard Damien was handling this himself. Edward had had enough of Levi Garrison and his conceited attitude. Now that Tyrone's son was getting involved directly, someone could finally avenge what Levi had done to him. The Protector Chapter 997 Aha! That's why that bastard has the guts to challenge us. He's Morris Group's boss. Damien exclaimed after doing some digging into Levi's background. He finally understood why Levi had the guts to be so obnoxious. Although few people knew Levi was the head of Morris Group, it did not take the garrison clan long to obtain that piece of information. Hearing the name, Edward widened his eyes in surprise. Morris Group? Even Triple Group in? Kyria is no match for that company. It practically dominates everything. Well, it's true that Morris Group has got some substance. But that doesn't mean Levi can. Take the Garrison family lightly. Father's pinnacle group in Southampton is far superior. I'll tell the company to acquire Morris Group. I bet Levi Garrison will come begging on his knees. In no time. This will be the price he has to pay for messing with the Garrison family. Damien. Let out a confident laugh as he imagined Levi begging for mercy. The next day, Levi and his mother began their journey home along with the beasts and the Amethyst guards. Levi was deep in thought, thinking about the encounter he had yesterday. A frown settled on his brows. Before long, he finally broke the silence. Mother, do you miss him? Emma was startled by his sudden question. She turned towards her son reluctantly, trying to Think of how she should answer in an appropriate manner. Do you still want to marry Tyrone? The family will finally accept you after all these years. Levi continued. No. I don't harbor unrealistic expectations like that anymore. That's no longer what I care. About, she replied firmly as she looked at Levi in the eyes. What do you care about then, he asked. A warm and gentle smile slowly spread across her face. Well, it's not anything important that you need to know. Come on, Mom. I will try my best to make your dream come true, he insisted. I hope you can stand in front of the garrisons one day and proudly tell them that you're my son and that you're a man worthy of their respect. But she quickly regretted what she said when she saw her son's solemn expression. You. Don't have to get all stressed out about it, Levi. 
This is just a thought I have, don't take it too. Seriously. The last thing she wanted was to pressurize her son and make things difficult for him. She knew how difficult and dangerous such an action could be for Levi. But that was not what her son thought. No, Mom. You will live to see that day. I promise. Levi pronounced. Yet, Emma knew he was just trying to make her feel better. She knew better than to set her expectations too high. Besides, Levi was not even 30 yet. He still had a long way to go before he could actually do something substantial. It was impossible that someone of his age would earn the respect of the Garrison family. When they arrived, Zoe was already waiting for them. She had put aside work to pick Emma up. How's the prep coming along? Levi asked when he saw the woman. We're almost done. We'll go over and bid for the project tomorrow, she replied. He nodded approvingly and let out a small smile. Remember to be careful of Lindsay. Granger. She's not an easy character. Don't worry, I already have it all planned out. Iris and I will travel separately tomorrow, Zoe. Assured. That's great. All the best for tomorrow then. Levi knew Zoe must have made adequate preparation, but he was still worried that something unexpected would pop up. Over at Golden Plaza, Jaden hung up the phone after a long call. Do you know who just called me? Damien Garrison. The actual Mr. Damien, he exclaimed. At the top of his voice. Around him, everyone looked at him enviously. Damien was well known to be the potential next heir of the Garrison clan. It must be an urgent matter for a man of his standing to actually call Jaden. What did Mr. Damien say? Lindsay asked as she scooted closer to Jaden. Mr. Damien wanted one thing done we are to crush Morris Group as soon as possible, they. Latter replied. The Protector Chapter 998. That's good news. We're competing for a project with them tomorrow anyway. That'll be our first chance, Lindsay commented. Jaden nodded, rolling his eyes schemingly. Exactly. Make sure you deal with them. Accordingly. I don't want anything to go wrong tomorrow. Lindsay and the other council members exchanged cunning glances with each other, and sinister smiles curved on their lips. Don't worry. They won't even make it to the venue. Tomorrow. The big day soon arrived. Silas and her team escorted Zoe and Oriental Star Group's council members as they headed for the venue. Silas, make sure nothing happens to anyone. Someone might try and stop us on the way. Zoe reminded before they departed. The woman refused to allow the same thing to happen again. She had once been held up by her competitor when she was on her way to the venue and had missed the bidding event. Because of that incident, she had been fooled once, she would not fall into the same trap again. Ms. Lopez, rest assured that everything will be okay. We will make sure everyone arrives. Safely, Silas replied calmly. In no time, Oriental Star Group's convoy departed for the venue. To ensure nothing would happen, Iris took a different route towards the destination. No one else in the company knew about it except for Zoe. Although everything had been meticulously planned out, Zoe still had a premonition of imminent danger as she sat in the car. Her eyelids kept twitching, and she could not hold it in any longer she needed to double confirm everything. Silas, could you check and see if everything is fine out there? Everything looks fine. Her bodyguard answered after surveying the surroundings. Bam! Suddenly, a vendor on a trishaw came out of nowhere. One of the cars did not manage to stop in time, running into it at full force. The collision sent the vendor flying three to four meters away before the man finally hit his head against the cold tar road. The gray road was soon stained red as blood gushed out of the man's body. The whole Oriental Star Group fleet pulled the emergency brake everyone was stupefied. Zoe's face turned pale something had happened just as she expected. 
she knew Pinnacle Group would not let her off the hook that easily. Is everyone okay? Zoe turned around frantically, checking to see if anyone was hurt. There. Schedule had been affected because of the accident, and Pinnacle Group managed to have their way, but Zoe did not want anything to happen to anyone, be it friends or foes. Everyone got out of the car, and some people rushed towards the vendor lying on the ground. Silas checked the man's pulse and her frightened gaze slowly trailed towards Zoe. Ms. Lopez. He's gone. Zoe's steps faltered, her knees going weak at the news. She could not believe Pinnacle Group would kill someone in order to stop her. Did they really plan all this? How cruel can those people get? This was not the first time a competitor had targeted her, but no one had ever gone to such length to get in her way. Pinnacle Group was the first to do so. Somebody help. They just hit someone. And the man is now dead, a passerby shouted. Soon, a huge crowd hurried over, encircling Zoe and the others. They had come forward. With kitchen knives, ready to get revenge on behalf of the man. You're not getting away with this. We will make sure you pay for it, the angry men shouted. It wasn't our fault. He's the one who came out of the junction all of a sudden. He's the one. Who ran into us. Zoe tried to explain the situation. However, her pleas only made the situation worse, she had angered them all even more. There were no surveillance cameras around that area, and it so happened that the Trisha had rushed out at the car dash cam's blind spot. There was no proof to whatever she claimed. Bullshit. We saw everything with our own eyes. You guys hit him. Don't blame a dead man. For what you did, one of the men yelled. Yet. Yeah. We're all witnesses. You won't get away with this, another cried out. The Protector Chapter 999 Silas' blood ran cold at the sight of those furious men. This is all my fault. I clearly saw that man there. But I didn't expect him to dash out just like that. Gosh, what? Should I do? Ms. Lopez. What should we do now, she asked in a frail voice. Her mind went blank, she could not think of any way of getting them out of this mess. There's nothing we can do. This was all premeditated. They did it to keep me away from the event, Zoe stated with a resigned sigh. The only thing she was concerned about now was that an innocent man had lost his life. Because of the strife between Pinnacle Group and her. If she knew that all this would come at the expense of a man's life, she would have given up. On this project readily. But she also knew that Iris would still make it to the event. She and Iris had foreseen something bad happening, and they already had a bulletproof plan. Laid out. Even if Zoe did not make it to the venue, Iris would still be there. You guys have nothing to worry about. I won't run away. I'll settle this properly, Zoe told. The crowd. After all, this man had died because of her. She took it on herself to look into the accident. Meanwhile, a car sped by along a road in the suburb. Iris cried out when she was informed that something had happened to Zoe. The woman had been on the way using another route when she got news of the incident. The car she was seated in braked to halt when a few men in black suddenly appeared. Before her, blocking her way in the middle of the road. Miss Annabelle, I'm sorry, but we have to cut your trip short. Don't worry, it'll only take two hours that's if you cooperate with us, one of them said as he leaned closer to the car. Window. Iris knew exactly what they were up to. It went without saying that all they wanted was to stop her from bidding for the project. The fact that these people had found out about her route surprised her. Now that these men were in her way, it was impossible for her to get herself out of this. The only thing she could do was to do as they demanded. I'm so sorry, Zoe. Iris sighed. Over at the venue, all the council members from Pinnacle Group had already gathered in a timely manner. Jaden and Lindsay held their heads high as they looked around. 
The event was about to commence. Many big companies had convened after knowing that the project was open for bid. Jaden approached some of the heads, putting up a smug smile. You guys won't stand a chance against us today. Pinnacle Group will win the project. All of you'd better back off. Try us, and you'll end up dead. He was rude and overbearing yet there was nothing those people could say. Jaden was from Pinnacle Group, no one had the guts to challenge that company. Since they were here at the event just for the sake of it, there was no need for them to incur the wrath of Pinnacle Group unnecessarily. Mr. Yolanda er, Ms. Granger, we've handled Zoe and Iris as instructed. They won't be able to make it, an assistant reported. A smirk crafted Jaden and Lindsay's faces when they received the news. There was no way a small company like Morris Group could threaten Pinnacle Group. It was foolish for Morris Group to think that they stood a chance to win. Did you leave any traces? Lindsay asked. No. No one will be able to track it back to Pinnacle Group. Also, we've blocked all the roads. So no one from Morris Group will reach this place, the assistant added with a sly smile. Beside him, Lindsay nodded as an evil smile broke out on her face. Now that I think of it, it's actually not a bad idea for Morris Group to come. They can well amuse us if they're humiliated here today. But, oh well, they can't even make it here now. What a pity. Yeah, they'll lose the project to us even if they came. It's just a matter of time before Morris. Group belongs to us. Jaden agreed. Just as the two were busy talking about taking Morris Group down, Yale Freeman, the person in charge of the project, walked over. Mr. Yolanda er, Ms. Granger, we're about to start. Shall we take a seat, he inquired politely. Jaden shot the man an innocent smile and asked, Oh, aren't we still waiting for Morris? Group. Yale gestured to invite them in as he cleared his throat. Actually. Morris Group met with an accident when they were on their way. I don't think they'll be able to make it. Just as Jaden and Lindsay were about to walk in, a deafening noise rang out from above, causing everyone to tilt their heads towards the sky. Quick! Look up! Look at the sky, someone exclaimed in shock. The Protector Chapter 1000 a choppy noise resounded through the place as a few private helicopters hovered in the sky. The rotor blades spun incessantly, and the sound grew louder as time passed. Everyone looked up and squinted their eyes at the sight of the helicopters flying in weird patterns in the sky. It turned out that those helicopters were making a skywriting. Morris Group Everyone was surprised when they saw what was written in the sky. Are these helicopters from Morris Group? Jaden and Lindsay exchanged worried looks as they watched everything play out before their eyes. They had done all they could to stop Morris Group from reaching the venue, but never in their wildest imagination would they expect them to arrive in private helicopters. The private helicopters pitched forward and finally got ready to descend, creating ripples of strong winds as the pilots lowered the machines on the ground. Everyone tried standing their ground lowering their heads as the helicopters got closer. They wind sent all the dust blowing in their faces, and people were forced to close their eyes as the wind got more forceful. Many began taking refuge and sought shelter as the wind intensified. Ironically, Jaden, who claimed to have noble blood, was the first to flee. In fact, he was crawling away like a coward because he knew he would die if he didn't get away quickly. His jaw dropped when he saw workers of Morris Group descend from the sky. His men had blocked all roads leading to the venue yet he had still miscalculated. Morris Group had flown people in private helicopters to get to the venue. Once the helicopters landed and positioned themselves in front of the place, Levi and Kieran came down and walked towards the disheveled lot. Levi. Levi Garrison, Lindsay mumbled in disbelief. He's Levi Garrison? Mr. Damien told me he's the man who owns Morris Group. But, regardless, 
Mr. Damien has told us that he's a nobody. Morris Group will be ours soon. Jaden scoffed. Lindsay did not answer him. Hatred and spite sparked in her eyes as her glare traced him. Levi Garrison. Things are gonna get interesting. Just in time. Levi exclaimed as he stood before the crowd. However, Yale did not seem happy to see him. The man personally preferred entrusting the project to Pinnacle Group, he knew he could. Not afford to get on the wrong side with that company. Now that Morris Group had arrived, Yale was caught in a difficult position. But the bidding process still had to go as planned. All right, since everyone's here, let's get started. Yale led everyone in. Behind Levi, Jaden, and Lindsay came close enough so he could hear them. You'd better stop before things turn ugly. You have no idea who you're going up against. Pinnacle Group is not a company you can mess with. Jaden warned. We will acquire Morris Group in no time. It's useless to compete with us. Lindsay added as. She tried to keep up with Levi's pace. However, Levi's nonchalance enraged her. Did you hear me? Give up now. It's for your own. Good. I know you're Morris Group's boss, but don't overestimate yourself. The enemy you're facing is much stronger than you think, and the world is much bigger than your tiny brain. Can imagine. Jaden also interjected, I heard that you have no regard for the Garrison family. Don't be childish. You've only seen a tiny bit of what they're capable of. You need to be realistic. Stop. Being so arrogant. Levi stopped abruptly at the entrance of the venue and shifted his contemptuous gaze. Towards them. I think y'all should stop here. There's no way you guys are getting in, he stated. Jaden and Lindsay's eyes widened in astonishment as they stared at him. Everyone who heard him all turned around in bewilderment. What? Who are you to bar us from entering? Lindsay interrogated. In front of them, Yale halted his step and walked over. He knew Levi had no right to stop Jaden and Lindsay. Kieran, keep an eye on them. Make sure they stay away, Levi ordered in a domineering tone. As he looked at the two from the corner of his eyes.